Tom Langford might be wearing the 62 instead of the 42. Have a look and see if he's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I don't even have a list of players on the 62. Do we have his Morelli play? Good morning and welcome to the True Energy VFL Reserves Grand Final for 2007 between the Coburg Tigers and the Port Melbourne Borough. These two teams finished on top of the table at the end of the home and away season. Coburg defeating Port Melbourne by 45 points in the second semi-final to make their way through to the grand final. For Port Melbourne, they had to defeat Williamstown last week in the preliminary final to make their way to the big game today. So one versus two. Neither side having made it to this stage last season. Umpire with the ball in hand is Brett Ritchie and we're about to get underway now. Coburg kicking to the right of screen or the Robert Heatley stand end. Port Melbourne to the left or the legend stand end. Foster goes up with Bloomfield in ruck, comes to ground, bursting through here is McGlynn for Port Melbourne. Gets a touch away on this occasion. Good cover there by McElaine of Coburg. And we're going to have a bounce already, just 20 seconds in. Very cool conditions at the moment. No breeze almost to speak of. Very slight, in fact, coming from the south. And as you can see, no overcast conditions, very clear day, perfect day for football. Kick out of the play here quickly now, up towards half forward. Chance to sock off the ground and get Coburg into attack. Cleve Hughes, which one to play here, under pressure. Good tackle on that occasion by Bo Nixon. He's wrapped up in the forward pocket and will have a bounce 20 out from goal. My name is Chris Weaver, co-commentator this morning is Tristan Fernanda. Happy to bring you the coverage here. Quick hands off the back here, Kane will get the clearing kick for Port. Looking for Nana here at centre half back under pressure here from Farrelly. Hands off, and they're away now. This under pressure here for Port Melbourne. We'll get it through to centre here, looking up for a full forward here in Gillam. Can't take the mark cleanly on that occasion. Bursting through though, and taking a kick away there is Sutcliffe. Looking for the top of the square, two on one. Who can get the crumbs? It's McGlynn. McGlynn shrugs off the challenge, well spotted up. On that occasion though, smothered by Vasilevsky. He takes a bounce, looks for a run ahead, and Kobo go away. Went with one hand there, Mullins. Probably could have gone with two. Johnston there to recover for Port Melbourne. As a consequence, they'll head to half forward. This is Gillen once again. Kick three goals in that second semi loss against Coburg. Hands off into the forward line now, Port Melbourne. Down near the boundary position. Recovered well on that occasion by Dean Kelly. Former Oakley Chargers player. Centres it up. Can't do it well. Only spots up McElaine there for Coburg. Kick now to the centre of the ground. Need numbers to run on. Well pressured and well running up the ground there by Little. Kicks long into the forward line. Mullen to the back, nearly gave away a free kick. He did for the push in the back. It will go to Johnston. We've played two minutes in this opening term. Neither side yet to score. Gary Johnston, chance to relieve for Port. Kicks out wide. It's a good kick too when he finds Bloomfield on his half-back flank. Plays on now. Dicey kick. Not a good one. Chopped off by Foster. He gets play moving straight away to Cathal Call. He kicks short to Mullins. Mullins in space, has a chance to reload inside 50. He looked for Hughes, didn't find him, went over that man's head and found Paul Curry on a strong lead. Curry a chance to kick Coburg's first goal this morning. He'll kick from about 40 metres out and should slot this one. Aside with a lot of scoring options, Tristan, during that, uh, that second semi win over Port Melbourne, Coburg had 12 individual goal kickers out of a tally of 16. No player kicking more than two. So they'll have lots of options up forward, Paul Curry among them. Very potent up forward is Coburg. Curry comes in meanwhile. Wobbly kick, but he's done the job. Coburg, first goal on the board. Well, Chris, after that turn turnover from Bloomfield, they did it fairly easily. Mullins found space and a good kick in found Curry. Had a chance to get out of defence there, Port Melbourne. Didn't make use of the free kick at full back, turned it over. Well spotted up there, Cork kicking towards Curry. Interesting, they've also got a second tall forward option up there as well in Hughes. So back in the centre now. Good early start there from Coburg. They're looking to pile on the pressure early on. Foster got the tap on that occasion, perhaps favoured by the bounce. Came down the ground though. Chance of Port Melbourne, however, to get the centre break. Hands off now to Sutcliffe. They're away here if they can get it clear. Off there to Waldron. Kick now into the forward line. They're looking for Gillam out in the lead. Too strong that occasion. Riddle caught behind. And Gillam should have a shot here. He'll be just over 40 metres out. Just on a 30 degree angle. 
A great play by Port on that occasion. Chris just makes it hard for defenders when you get the ball out of the centre so quickly. It does indeed. Foster got the tap, Sutcliffe equal to it. Set up a teammate running past and uh, too easy going forward there. Port Melbourne with a chance to answer very quickly. Measured approach here, Andrew Gillen. Kicked three goals the last time these two sides met a fortnight ago. Kick on that occasion is poor. Very poor indeed. Loose, lost balance completely. It's out on the full. Very disappointing kick there, Tristan. Not good at all. Wasn't pleasant. Looked like he almost creeped in slightly too close to the man on the mark and just slewed off the side of his boot. Leading goal kicker in the competition this year was Andrew Gillen. 54 goals in the VFL reserves. Didn't add to it on that occasion. Kick in there from Vasilevsky. Found a player going long on that occasion in Keogh. Running on now is Farrelly. Farrelly hands off. We'll get the ball here. Kicks long into the forward line. Mullins a target perhaps. No. Cleve Hughes from behind. Takes the mark. And in fact on that occasion I think it's Curry again is it? Trying to see out there on the far forward flank for Coburg. It is Curry indeed. So Curry, chance now to line up for goal number two. Just five and a half minutes played. Good start for him. Kick on its way here from Curry. He's just off target. So Paul Curry, one goal, one early. And Coburg, one goal, one seven. Port Melbourne yet to score. We've gone five and a half minutes in the opening term. Port Melbourne now to bring it back into play. Dalton has the ball in his defensive goal square. The marshal of the troops up ahead. Kicks long on this occasion. Big pack forms in the centre of the ground. There was a booming kick there by Dalton. Running onto it for Port Melbourne is Nana. Here's a chance to kick inside 50. Wobbly punt kick. Gillum bounced over that man's head. Kelly, snap around the body. Dean Kelly. He's kicked a great goal. Fantastic movement of the ball by Port Melbourne. And they get on the scoreboard here in the 2007 VFL Reserves Grand Final. So it's Coburg 1-1-7. Letting Port Melbourne one straight goal. We've gone five minutes in this first term. We mentioned Dean Kelly early. He played last year in the TAC Cup Grand Final for the Oakley Chargers. One of their best to field in a, a very comprehensive win last year. Perhaps slightly unlucky not to get drafted, but uh, has played some good footy at VFL seniors level this year. And good to see him out there getting a taste of Grand Final action already today as well. One goal straight now, Port Melbourne. Trailed by one point to Coburg, 1-1-7. Back in the centre waiting for the bounce. Umpire Ritchie, number 17, you can see in the centre of screen. Bounces down now. Bloomfield to contest against Foster. Neither got a clear tap on that occasion. Port to go quickly into attack once again. Kelly's a target at the back, couldn't get there. Riddle got the touch, very important to do so on that occasion. Under pressure from Kelly, got it off there on that occasion to Keogh. Keogh, left foot out of defence. He'll need someone to go to, and he's got core. So core between Centre wing and half back, hands off over the top to Sean Hoy, who played a lot of seniors football last year for Coburg. Running through here, looking for Mullins on this occasion. He'll get a nudge in the back from Johnston. And looking to play on quickly now, Jonathan Mullins. Looking to set it up here. Can Bloomfield cut it off? He can't. But he's got a teammate there nonetheless in Nixon. So Bo Nixon, formerly of Collingwood and Hawthorne, heads wide on this occasion to Nana. Played a lot of reserves footy this year, Rowan Nainer, after a good season in the seniors last year for Port. Hands off to Sutcliffe here. He heads wide to the half-board flank now. Play on this occasion with the footy there is Carroll. Hands over the top here. They're going to get into the forward line here. Left foot kick on that occasion from Thomas. He can't spot up Gillum. It goes out of play, 30 from goal. So quite a few of these Port Melbourne players played seniors for them last year when they were bottom of the seniors competition few recruits this year into the Port Melbourne side. They've rebounded strongly. As a consequence, a lot of these players played in the Rizzies this year. Back into play now. The back there was Thomas. He got the tap. No one there to crumb and help him out, however. And they could get away here, Coburg, once again. Looking to clear it. One-on-one -on -one contest. Who will win out? It looks like it's going to be Anderson in front position. Ran past it, but had Tchaikovsky in support. Tchaikovsky, left foot kick to centre half forward. Needs a target. Johnston misread it. Mullins at the back. Got touched, lost it. Played it cleverly here to Little. Little now. Kick a goal from Little. Is just off target, one behind. So Nick Little, one behind. 1 2 8 Coburg. Port Melbourne, one behind. We're just about to tick on to 10 minutes opening term. Port Melbourne to bring it into play once again. Kick comes in short. They're going to play on straight away. Taking a bounce there. 
There's a play uh, for Port Melbourne. Cans over to Bo Nixon. Running out of the fence. Kick long up towards the player there, which was Carroll. Punched away from that man. Coming through for Coburg there was Carrick. He did very well. Kicks inside, 50. It's a good kick. Punched away from Cur Curry, however. He's going to get it back. No, handball missed him. Coming through hard there for Port Melbourne was Nana. He did well. Oh, this is tight. Good contested footy. Carrick dived on the ball. Got it out to his teammate. He's thrown it, in fact. And the free kick going to go is the way of Port Melbourne's Rowan Nana. Between wing and half back, Rowan Nana. A chance to relieve some pressure. Going to have to kick short, and Shorty does find Bo Nixon. Good kick by Bo Nixon. Found his teammate there in Reese Thomas. He's going to kick long inside 50. It's a high up and under kick. Under the ball is Kurt McGlynn. He did very well. Never easy to mark those high kicks. He found too much space. Has a chance to go back and kick Port Melbourne's second goal this morning. VFL experience from another club too, Kurt McGlynn. He used to play for the Bendigo Bombers, having come through the TAC Cup Bendigo Pioneers. Played, as I say, quite a bit of football last year for the senior side. Struggled to make a mark this year, however. Good player is Kurt McGlynn. Comes in this time, 45 metres out. He liked it. Faded away with the breeze, however, and gone through for one behind. So it's Coburg 1-2-8, leading Port Melbourne one straight, uh, one one seven, should I say. Ten and a half minutes played here. Looking for an option out of the kick out. Foul is short in the pocket if it's wanted. Vasilevsky, however, just taking his time at present. Goes towards the far half back flank. Legends stand side. On this occasion, he'll spot up a teammate there in Robertson. Robertson now. He's got Little free on the wing. Nick Little. Got space, has second bounce now. Pierce closing down, gets a kick away now. Long to the square. At the back here is Bo Nixon. Should shepherd it through. He will for a rush behind. Coburg 139, Port Melbourne 117. Playing on quickly here now, Port. This is Carroll. Carroll, front and square here. He's got a teammate running past on that occasion. Up to Nainer. Nainer now needs to link up here that's towards half forward. Kick his kick off is. Uh, Cut off there by Farrelly, however. It was a poor option in the end. Tchaikovsky under pressure there from Dwyer. Nearly spilt it. Got it away. Good pressure there on that occasion there from Hoy. We'll get up to the wing position. Who's he got? He's got Lynch. And Lynch can just slow things up. Swings onto the left foot now. Looking to the full forward spot. One out there was Curry. Couldn't mark. On that occasion, bursting through there was De Bruin. De Bruin. Hands over the top to Kane. Running past here is Waldron. Needs a kindly bounce and gets it. He's got, he's got Curry on his chase. Just lumbering away, and he goes to the lateral option. This is Bloomfield, just chasing after it. Not much pressure. Robertson will probably corral him in here. He does. Goes to the smother. Can't succeed in doing so. Kane with the football now. In towards Plymouth. There's going to be a free kick there. It'll come back the way of the player who disposed of it there in Kane. He was taken without the football late on by Little. And he'll get the hands off now. Back to Kane. The one-two. Kicking towards the full forward spot. In front there is Vasilevsky, read it better than Kelly. And he'll take a mark on the last line of defence for Coburg. He'll head wide now, looking for Glenn Carrick on this occasion. Carrick now, up and under kick. Who's it to? No one in particular. Two Port Melbourne players there. De Bruin wins it out. Hands off to Nainer, to Carroll now. Half forward flank here. Oh, needed a better touch there. Lost under, under no pressure almost on that there for Port Melbourne by Carroll. And they're going to cop up the footy. McElaine here. Off to Lynch. Lynch cut off by Kane. Kane, left foot kick. His kick is smothered in the end by Keogh. Down into the forward pocket here. Happy to see it out of play there for Coburg is Riddle. Tough job for him in the back pocket today. And to play now, it'll be Thomas in the front position. Can he get the tap? No, Gillam it is. Kurt McGillan the, the pack. Quick play there. Bloomfield in position. It's going to beat him the footy to the boundary line and we'll have another boundary thrown on the opposite side 38-5 out from goal 13 minute mark opening term Coburg 139 Port Melbourne 117 Steve Foster having to do a lot of the ruck work not only in the centre but around the ground unlucky perhaps not to get a free kick there it will come back and Coburg to get the kick for the push in the back it'll go the way of Little a lot of touches early on here for Coburg out of defensive half fit there for Little. Goes in short there on, that, on uh, that occasion to Rayson. First time we've seen him this morning. Goes wide now, the lateral option. Is the switch on, perhaps. Indeed, 
Riddle went to the centre of the ground to call. He's got space now, can spot up a lead. Hughes it is out in the lead. Went with one hand, perhaps could have gone with two. Mullins it is at the fall of the football. Gave a nudge away, wasn't spotted. Back down in there under the footy. Hands off to Sewell. Need a clear possession here, Coburg, to try and get it forward. They can't. There's a turnover. Nana to the Todd medalist here in Dwyer. Gives the hand pass away. Had to wait for there was Henshaw. His, uh, his play on that occasion was, wasn't determined enough. And it's going to be a turnover. Farrelly there. Long to the top of the square. It'll beat all comers. It'll go through for one behind. Coburg get another behind there. 1 4 10, Port Melbourne 1 1 7, 14 and a half minutes opening term. Really high pressure as you'd expect in these early stages of a grand final, Chris. Both sides making hard work for themselves, coming through the middle, sometimes over possessing the football. But so far it's been rather free flowing. So Port Melbourne a chance to bring the ball back into play. Going to kick long, looking for Bloomfield. It's outnumbered, he went up with one hand. They might get it back. Coming through hard for Coburg there was Trakovsky. He was wrapped up. The umpire said you had the time there. You're holding the ball. The free kick to Henshaw for Port Melbourne. He played on, got the handball to Bloomfield. He went backwards and found his teammate there in Plymouth. Kicks long, inside 50. Kelly's going to fly. Kelly flies and Kelly marks. Great mark, Dean Kelly. Looking for options. Wonder if he'll get the journey, Chris. Have to kick it all 50 metres. Possibly not a bad little kick, even though he's not the biggest of players, Dean Kelly. Only 180 centimetres. But uh, I'd back him from this angle here, Tristan. Well, he got Port's first goal. A chance to kick their second. Dean Kelly now. 50 metres out. Let's sail uh, with a long bomb. But went away for a one behind. Coburg wastes no time bringing the ball back into play. And Carrick marks. 45 metres out from his defensive goal. I think on that occasion, Dean Kelly trying to fade away to the right there, trying to get a bit of extra momentum on the footy. Kicked through the line of the footy, but just couldn't get the accuracy in the end. Didn't look comfortable. No, racing this time. Kicked inboard. Made a mess of it there was Core. He got the handball off to Farrelly, who just unloads a long bomb inside 50. Coburg player could have been held there. Coming through strongly there is for Port Melbourne. Player at Plymouth. Kicked long to the top of the goal square for Coburg, however. And a good strong mark, despite fierce pressure from the Port Melbourne defender. A good strong mark was taken by Jake D'Souza. And uh, it was Ryan Anderson there, Tristan, getting the ball forward under pressure. Just needed to get something out. Can't always be perfect, but a good spot up nonetheless. But make no mistake, Jake D'Souza comes in. What does he like, that one? Kick Coburg's second of the morning. They move to 2-4-16, letting Port Melbourne 1-2-8. So Jake D'Souza, former Western Jets player, being coached this afternoon by his former Western Jets coach, Adam Potter. And uh, Coburg skipping away now. Eight-point lead here. Goal for goal so far. That was the first goal for 12 minutes in this opening term. Steve Foster back in the centre now. Foster going to do a lot of the rough work. 200 centimetres. Very raw ruckman from the, uh, the Eastern Football League Club of Mitcham, Steve Foster. Up against Reese Thomas, giving away nine centimetres in height here, Thomas. He gets the tap, though, favoured by the bounce from umpire Richard just on that occasion there. This is Dwyer here, out of the centre, having got the ball from Kane. It'll be a turnover. He didn't spot up a teammate cleanly. McElane and Little in there, hard at it. Wrapped up there, they'll wrap up their opponent, Waldron. We're going to have another bounce just inside the centre square. Port Melbourne, they've rode the taps here from Foster quite successfully but not always the best options going forward for Port. A couple of turnovers early. Dwyer in particular haven't given it away. Tapped out of the ruck here. Two players there. Little needs a shepherd here from Carrick. It's provided. And he finds a teammate here in Sewell. So Sewell, centre wing position. Heads in boards now. Finds Anderson. Hands off to a teammate running past in Rayson. Rayson to full forward. Hughes should mark and does. 45 out from goal. Cleve Hughes, Richmond listed player. A lot expected of him since he joined the Coburg Tigers. Has at times struggled to find and play his best footy. But he marks there. 45 out from goal. Very slight angle. No breeze to speak of. As Klingon about to run on for his first appearance in this year's grand final. The player he'll replace there at ground level being Carrick. 
Hughes, kick a goal on its way. He's got it through. So third goal, second in a row now for Coburg. 19 minute mark of the opening term. They're 3 4 22, leading Port Melbourne 1 2 8. Hughes' first after of the afternoon. They've had three individual goal kickers. Well, Chris, you mentioned Port Melbourne not spotting up targets. They're mucking around with the football, particularly in the centre of the ground. I think that's the difference between the two sides. We saw on that occasion Coburg bringing the ball forward very fluently, giving their forwards every chance to mark on lead. That time, Hughes capped it off with a great goal. Indeed, he did. So the marking forwards is a bit of a wrestle on the forward line. Bit of bargy line. bargy, but back in the centre. Foster got a good tap that time for Coburg. He's done well in the ruck, shouldering. The majority of the ruck low today. McGlynn now, a chance for Port Melbourne. Running through the centre of the ground is Dwyer. He kicks inside 50, not a good one. He's turned the ball over once again and Farrelly takes the relieving mark for Coburg. Gets the handball off. Turnover, however, and marking for Port Melbourne was De Bruin. He kicks out wide to his teammate there in Matt Pearce, who had time to gather. Kicks inside 50, leading strongly. And taking a good solid mark for Port Melbourne was Bloomfield. And he'll have a chance to kick Port Melbourne's second goal this morning. Bloom tall, tall utility type, Bruce Bloomfield. Only 190 centimetres, but expecting to play in a lot of key positions for Port. We saw him starting off this morning in ruck. Uh, expect to see him going up forward. And also perhaps pinch hitting down back at one stage this Could afternoon. Could be very interested. dangerous up forward. We saw a lot of him last year uh, playing Port Melbourne senior level and doing fairly well in the forward line. So Bloomfield, as soon as you give him the wrap, you know what happens. Kick on the way, didn't hit the target, and Cho Coburg now a chance to clear through Rayson. He gets the handball over to Little. Little, time and space to spot up a teammate. It's a good kick too. And marking for Coburg in the centre of the ground that time was Klingen. That was Morelli on that occasion there. Oh, sorry, Klingen, you're right. He kicked long, looking for Mullins. Mullins had to get the way, kick away quickly. Could only affect a worm-burning kick. Nana, chance to get a handball off. Did so. Coming through strongly for Port Melbourne was Carroll. Now for Port Melbourne, Nat Nixon. He kicks a low pass kick, looking for his teammate there in Monteith. He had time to gather. Oh, ball eluded the uh, Port Melbourne play there in Thomas. Farrelly took far too long. Want to unpack the picnic and blanket. And umpire said, look, got to get rid of the ball a lot more quickly than that. So Kane will take the free kick for Port Melbourne on centre wing. Looks for the lateral option. And marking in the centre of the ground for Port Melbourne is Dalton. He plays on, has a chance kick ball long, inside 50. Wasn't a good option. Backing back with the pack for Coburg. Not taking the mark was Foster. They're mucking around with a little bit. Got a touch of the fumbles there was Riddle. Under immense pressure is Coburg. Chance for Gillam. For Port Melbourne. He spins around, launches a long, long kick at goal. Andrew Gillam, that's a great goal. So Port Melbourne moved to 2 2 14, trailing Coburg 3 4 22. And perhaps making up for that earlier miss there, Tristan. Andrew Gillam, you marked strongly, you'll remember, earlier in the term, they had an atrocious kick at goal, but on that occasion, Andrew Gillen making the most of it from the more difficult uh, position. Indeed, it was a comedy of errors that time. Both sides making hard work for themselves. Spilt out the back to Gillen and he capped it off with a great goal. Leading goal kicker in the VFL reserves this season. Curry has to contest in ruck on this occasion up against Thomas. Got hands away. I need to get the ball out of centre here, Coburg, and respond quickly. And D'Souza marks on centre wing. Quite congested up forward. D'Souza spins round now. He'll kick into the hole. Mark is taken strongly in defence on, that, on the, that line there by Dalton. 45 out from goal. So Dalton now to centre half back with a short option. Need to lead away here. The switch is on and they head towards Thomas. And Thomas Mark, centre wing. Thomas looking for a lead here. Half forward flank. He went for the option in Dwyer. Dwyer couldn't win out. Good body work there by Cathal Corey. He bursts through, gets the ball to himself. Two on one there. At the fall, the ball is pierced. Hands away now. They could get it clear here, Port. Up towards Carroll. And now rebound here and try and reload. Sutcliffe, in fact. Sutcliffe it is. Thank you, Tristan. Better approach than it was last time. He heads to the short position at half forward here. That's Kane. Kane now to Monteith. Usually pro a prolific possession getter, Reese Monteith. Haven't seen much of him early. Kicks along into attack. Looks for a marking option. Couldn't find it. Fall of the ball. Nana got the pressure there on Rayson. It's going to be a throw. Miles Sewell it was. 
in fact, who uh, was the transgressor, unable to get hand to footy. So good tackle there from Rowan Nana, showing a good lot of forward pressure there. And he's rewarded with the free kick. Right on it on that occasion was umpire Richie. Tried to get away with it, the Coburg defender there in Sewell. But Nana wrapped him up in a good tackle and takes the result with the free kick. BFL spotters remember Rowan Nana used to have the dreadlocks last year. Shaven head this year. Long to the goal square, poor kick. Didn't kick through the line of the footy. Kurt McGlynn it is, races after it. Hands off here now to Carroll. Back to McGlynn, the one two. Goes around Little, back to Carroll. Left foot kick, needs someone at the hot spot. In the front position there was Rayson. Sewell there, kept the footy away from danger. Can he get a clear option bursting through from McElaine? He can't, he's gonna be wrapped up. We're gonna have a bounce 30 out from goal. Port Melbourne, just letting themselves down with that kick at goal. They've had the opportunities, Nana and Gillam in particular. They can't make a count on the scoreboard at present. Still trailing by eight points, 25 minute mark of the opening term. Bounce there, punched out of the ruck. They need someone to rove it, however, Port. They can't get it clear here. Bursting through is Robertson. Hurried kick. There's going to be a free kick there. I'm not sure that was for It's downfield. I think he was decked after he kicked it. And boy, it's on. It is. Argy Bargy in the Port Melbourne forward line. It is. Tchaikovsky it is, however, downfield. Hands way to D'Souza. Kicks on to the forward line. You keep your eye on the fight. I'll have it on the footy. There is Johnson at the spill of the footy. He's got Sutcliffe here. They can get it quickly now to the forward line here, Port Melbourne. An acre of space. Has a bounce. Goes the short option to Kane. What will Kane do? He'll hold it up. Yeah, went for the sideboard handball option. Didn't do so in the end. Hit it in boards there. Kill him. Chance for free kick, no, wasn't paid. And Coburg to get out of defence, poor option. Only Mc McGlynn was spotted up in the end. And McGlynn to rebound into attack. Kicks long, the target is Dwyer, it's over his head. He has to wait, let it bounce now. Has he got support here, trying to burst through there with Sutcliffe, and he shepherded it cleverly there. Centres it up there, does Dwyer. And the mark is taken 45 metres out from goal. Clever play there. Sometimes you've just got to help out the team out of the contest. Kicks over the top, I mean, in the meantime. <laughs> it's funny how you see a fight, Chris. Bit of argy-bargy in the forward line. As soon as the forward smell a goal, it all disperses. Port Melbourne moving forward on that, that occasion. Yeah, poor spot up heading forward there, I thought, from Coburg. Well, and, it, was, uh, it just wasn't a good kick. Heard on the rebound, Sutcliffe had uh, time and space on the wing to spot up an option. And once Port were able to work it out, they were able to get this forward line foray. This probably hurt Coburg, because I think they had the upper hand in this first term. So Dwyer, kick from about 40 metres out, no real angle to speak of. Comes in, looks a good kick, clapped through by Bloomfield on the goal line, and the goal line by says, yes, sirree. So at the quarter time break, Coburg go in with a two point lead, 3-4-22 to the Borough, 3-2-20. I was going to ring you, but I couldn't yeah, move from my we seat. Got, we got the screen, we got the screen, so. yeah. Quarter time at the VFL Reserves Grand Final. Coburg 3-4-22, Port Melbourne 3-2-20. Big day for the Coburg Footy Club with both reserves and seniors in Grand Final action. Uh, one injury to note from that quarter time there, Sean Hoy on crutches with a knee injury. Unlikely to reappear for the rest of the game. And the quarter time break enlivened there by the fight in the Port Melbourne forward line. Bit of argy bargy, back into play now. The uh, the huddles broke up pretty cleanly after that, however, and <laughs> ready for the resumption of the second term here. There'll be Dalton in ruck for Port Melbourne. They're third in the centre of the afternoon already. His opponent will be Foster. Back to ground level there. No one could get a clear touch. Trying to burst through was Kane for Port Melbourne. Hands over the top to McGlynn. Tried to run off his line. Very cleverly got off his line in the finish. Kicks long now into the forward line. Needs a marking option. Kelly caught in between. Gillum crumbed at the front here. Chance for goal here if he can swing round there to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe's kick is not too bad, but he was just a little bit unbalanced at the finish. It heads away to the left for one behind. So the margin back to one point, Port Melbourne 3-3-21, Coburg 3-4-22, 40 seconds in. Into the pocket there goes Vasilevsky, spots up Farrelly. Farrelly now, heads wide to the wing, Pierce will give pressure here, could cut off the kick 
which is aimed for Robertson. One on one. Pierce needs support here at the contest. Can't find it. And Koberg are away now finally. A bounce. Centre wing position. Kick towards the forward line. Wobbly old kick there. Searching out Curry. Couldn't do so. Anderson tried to burst through. Blocked off the ground here. Port Melbourne find Monteith. Batted out there to Tchaikovsky in the forward line. Need to clean clean gather to Rayson. Rayson now under pressure there. Run down from behind by Nat Nixon. There'll be a turnover only as far as Mullins. Mullins off one step. Shoots a goal and kicks it. So Jonathan Mullins there kicks the first goal of the second term. Coburg's first. Having answered back to two goals late in the, in the first term from Port Melbourne. They head up to 4-4-28. Port Melbourne 3-3-21. A minute and a half into the second term. Well, Rayson, eyes lit up when he saw the goals. Thought he could waltz in and just kick it. Great defensive tackle by the Port Melbourne defender on that occasion. Not sure it was. They turned it over, however, and Mullins snapped a good goal. So, lead back out to seven points. Very messy, old-fashioned crummers goal on the finish. Indeed it was. He's looked lively up forward, has John o. Mullins. They'll have to watch him. Anyway, back in the centre, Dalton and Foster once again. Give that one to Dalton. Got the ball down to Kane. Good kick inside 50, Chris Kane and found his teammate there in Carroll it is. It is Marcus Carroll. Good spot up there. One of the first times we've seen a clear centre break this afternoon. McGlynn and Kane in particular for Port Melbourne had been threatening to do so. First time they succeeded however. And Marcus Carroll for Port Melbourne comes inside 50. Not a good kick. He's kicked it away to the left. Won't trouble the scorers at all. In fact, it's gone off hands and through for uh, out for a throw in should I say. Right in front of the Coburg race this afternoon. So ball spinning back into play. Bloomfield now to do the ruck work in his forward 50. Looked to get a quick kick out of the pack. Couldn't do so. Storming through for Port Melbourne there was Carroll. Looked to get the ball to Kane. Kane got a clever handball over to Nana who fired the ball out the back to Dalton. Dalton around the body just misses to the left however. So Port Melbourne 3-4-22 trailing Coburg 4-4-28. We've gone three minutes so far in this second term. Looking for an outrider here from the kick out. They were going for Kling and decided not to go to it. So it was Vasilevsky. Got a good kick out for Coburg. Coming through the ground now quickly is Kaur. Kaur got the handball off to Anderson. He can kick long inside 50. Hughes caught behind. Doing well for Port Melbourne there was Henshaw. He lost his feet. As ever, John O'Mullins thereabouts. He couldn't gather. Feeling for a free kick on this occasion. Thought the Port Melbourne defender handballed towards the boundary line. I didn't see much in it myself. We're throwing 50 metres around from Coburg's attacking goal. And it's been one of the, uh, the leading contests so far, hasn't it? Mullins against Johnston down forward. Mullins and everything. Interesting ruck contest. Kane was the only man up for Port Melbourne. Kicking round his body inside forward 50 for Coburg there was Sewell. Racing a chance for Coburg now. Gets the kick on goal. Didn't, didn't have the journey now. Port Melbourne a chance to relieve through Sutcliffe. He's marshalling his troops up ahead, shouting out orders. A chance to clear now. Up towards centre wing for Port Melbourne. There for Port Melbourne, not gathering cleanly, was Marcus Carroll, and he watched the ball spill over the boundary line. Coburg's attacking side of centre wing, right in front of our broadcast position. So, four minutes gone in the second term. Coburg and Port Melbourne, just six points separating them at present. Mason and after here, and the best spot to pick it up there for, for Coburg was Anderson. Hands off to Carrick now. Carrick goes around the tackle, heads wide, too wide. The option he was looking for was little, but he couldn't find it in the end, and it goes out for a boundary throw in, 70 around from goal. Both sides just falling down with that kick into the forward 50, I feel. That's the skill level struggling a little bit at present. Back into play now. Foster has front position. He misreads it. Dalton at the back gets the tap. Port Melbourne away here. If Nana can get clear touch, he can't. Kling in there, under pressure. Good touch, over the top to Farrelly. Sewell, cut one in the back there. Nana's not happy with it. Put the pressure on his opponent, but went right into the centre of his back. So Miles Sewell to spot something up at centre half forward. Little had to go with one hand, trying to hold the opponent away. Foster had to go, was beaten to it on that occasion. Kane, hands off there to Monty, back there to a teammate in McGlynn. Centre, centre wing now, trying to clear it any which way, however, and they'll only get it as far as Keo. Keo's kick long, Little went early, to give away a free kick there for in the back. And the free kick will go Port Melbourne's way to McGlynn. McGlynn heads wide and finds Monteith. Reese Monteith, centre wing position, heads straight down the line. Mark taken here from one of the players we haven't seen much of yet this afternoon, Shane Allen. 
Allen needs to direct the play. It's quite congested towards the forward line for him. He goes short and finds Luke Peel. Listed as number 34 this afternoon, Luke Peel. But we're in a number 62 jumper. Came off the interchange bench. Heads in boards. Once again, mark taken here by De Bruin. A bit stagnant here from Port Melbourne. They need a direct option at centre half board. They go that way now. Two players fly. Bursting through those Robertson. Clingens the way here. Clever hand pass. Second bounce. Under pressure here from Pierce. Will he be run down? No. Clever Shepherd kicks on to full forward. Mullins has the fall of the flight of the footy. He can't read it through, however. It's through for just the one behind. Coburg 4-5-29. Port Melbourne 3-4-22. Five and a half minute mark of the second term. Players. Doing well on the break. It's a little bit messy at times early, Tristan. For a moment there, I thought Hughes wasn't going to apply the shepherd. He just ran alongside Klingen. Did in the end. Yeah. Didn't get the shot on goal effectively, though. So Bo Nixon, former Collingwood and Hawthorne player. Out to Peel now. Peel's kick down the line, finds Thomas. Been impressed with his play early. Kicks down the line further towards the half-board flank. Sutcliffe marking. He'll wheel around 70 from goal. Needs a target up forward. Oh, good strong mark there from Nainer. Ran into the spot and marked on the arc of 50. He'll head short. Mark barely 15. It is paid, however. And Port Melbourne, whose goal kicking's been poor so far. They've missed three set shots already. Bloomfield, Gillam, and trying to think of the other one. It was Carroll, who also missed. So Chris Kane has a chance to redeem them here. Bridge the margin back to a point. Made his best effort, I reckon, Chris. Chris Kane wheels around, trying to get distance. Can't get the accuracy. Strong mark there. Is it going to be paid? It's not. It's rushed through in the end for one behind. Port Melbourne, 3 5 23. Coburg, 4 5 29. Seven and a half minutes gone. Second term. Yeah, I'll give Sutcliffe the credit before. I don't think the kick was meant to go to Nana, but Nana did well to get the ball to Kane. Anyway, back to the action. Coburg on the outer side here through Keo. Have a chance to reload. He got a good handball off to the running play there for Coburg, which was. Anderson runs inside 50 now, kicks shot on goal. Just missed to the right, however. Great transition there by Port Melbourne, Chris. Uh, Coburg, should I say. It was. De Bruyne now to bring the ball back into play for Port. Didn't spot, his, spot up his teammate there in Nixon. Nixon good enough to gather, however. De Bruyne under immense pressure will have to concede once again. I just feel though, Tristan, with, with, that with the tall options we've got up forward, Coburg could be spotting players a bit better up towards the hot spot particularly towards the top of the goal square. Well, they've, we mentioned their potent forward line earlier in the game, and Port Melbourne could be under real pressure if they get the ball inside 50 quickly and directly. We mentioned the skill level, not great. Shown once again on this occasion for Port Melbourne. Gathering there was Waldron. He got the handball back to Nixon, making, mucking around with it up Port Melbourne. Allen has to retreat. Caught in two minds, got a handball to Bloomfield. He'll have to be quick. Wrapped up in a strong tap, tackle there by Tarkovsky. So they are really struggling to get out of defence our Port Melbourne. Too many handballs on that occasion, caused by the initial kick-in, not hitting a target. So bounce down, 55 metres out from Coburg's goal. Bloomfield fires with Foster. Foster got the tap down, but Carrick couldn't run onto it, and the ball's trickled out for a boundary throw, in about 60 metres around from Coburg's goal. Boundary on by a waste, no time at all. It's gonna be Bloomfield and Foster once again. Coming through strongly there is Farrelly. He couldn't gather. Carrick looked to steal the ball away. Playing a bit of tunnel ball there is Dwyer. He did very well. Slung in a tackle but managed to get an effective handball out. Nainer now. A chance for Port Melbourne. Another turnover. He looked up forward for Allen. But couldn't find him. Taking the mark for Coburg was Morelli. Robertson not happy with his kick either on this occasion. So Ryan Anderson manages to gather the ball. Coming through strongly there for Coburg was Sewell. He couldn't mark. So Port Melbourne a chance to relieve this time. Once more the ball's chopped off. This time by Farrelly so he can launch an attack for Coburg. This time, finally, kick hits its mark. Marking was Trakowski for Coburg. He kicked in long inside 50 looking for Hughes. Hughes couldn't mark. Wrapped up in a strong tackle by three Coburg players on that occasion was the Port Melbourne player in De Bruin. And we'll have a bounce about 20 metres out from Coburg's goal. We mentioned Coburg's forward line, Tristan. Of course, missing Ramiz Dagob here today. Perhaps he would have been another option. Indeed. That time, 
Bounce went down. Curry couldn't win it for Coburg. Doing well was Dalton. Running out of defence now for Port Melbourne is Gary Johnson. We haven't seen a lot of him today. Ball slews off the side of his boot. I don't know if he spotted the player out of the corner of his eye. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Running onto it for Port Melbourne, there was Carroll. He kicked wide inside 50, however. Beat boundary line beat Gillam on that occasion. And they'll be throwing about 35 metres around for Port Melbourne's goal. They're not really going direct either side. They're not. The forwards there, particularly Gillam, leading a bit too wide out into the pockets. They're very deep here at MC Labor Park. You can't get caught out of position. And the kick, when the kick isn't spotted up, you end up with errors such as that. Flying over the top there in that ruck contest was Luke Peel. He didn't get an effective punch on the ball. Volleyball spike style. On the bottom of the pack is Dean Kelly. He was wrapped up by a few Coburg players. We'll have a bounce. Umpires plucked a free kick out of here. Don't know what that was for. I'm sure Coburg will take it. Carrick got the handball off to Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky over the top to Farrelly. Initially thought about going the handball, but kicked out wide. Long up towards centre wing. Didn't start, spot up a target there in Little. And Little watched the ball trickle over the boundary line. We'll have a throw in. Port Melbourne's attacking side of centre wing. So 12 minutes gone here in the second term. Coburg 4 7 31. Port Melbourne 3 5 23. Just the one goal in the second term. It's gone Coburg's way. Before the ball, there was Little. He won the footy, caught one high. He'll get the free kick. Coburg contesting well against Port Melbourne at these stoppages. The smalls from either side. Whistle just held up here. Waddell picking himself up very gingerly from the bottom of the pack here. Got a lot of the footy early as well. Uh, Nick Little, been very impressed by his game, Tristan. Been very bright. Little goes down the line now, needs an option up forward. Foster it was under pressure from Bloomfield. Kicked off hands now. This is Anderson, shoves out of the tackle, hands behind. It's going to quarterback it here to Carrick. Carrick will head down the line looking for Sewell. Sewell couldn't take it. In fact, it was so wide, it was out of play on the full. So relief there for Port Melbourne. They should have been placed under more pressure than they were. Coburg could have been away. Foster missing the mark he should have taken. Sewell perhaps hitting too wide as well. Long kick now down the line. At the, at the back here is Carroll. Can he get the fall of the footy? No, he's got a teammate in support, however. And Port Melbourne will head down the wing position. Back to Carroll now. Kicks on to the forward line. Out in the lead is Gillum. Gillum couldn't mark. Good pressure on that occasion. They'll recover here, Coburg. They'll head down the centre of the, the corridor. Picking up the footy here now. Running through his Rayson. Rayson, long kick to full forward. Looking for Hughes. Nudged his opponent Henshaw under the flight of the footy. Out towards the boundary line. Can he keep it in Stephen Henshaw? He can't. I love a boundary throw in. 35 around from goal. That's what they've got to look to do a little bit more. Come through the corridor, Chris. Give the forwards every chance. They won't lead wide unless the ball's coming from a wide area. So Hughes, that occasion, cleverly got his man under the ball. Couldn't run onto it, however. We mentioned those goal kickers for Coburg. 35 goals this year to Nick to, uh, to Ramiz Dagger. He's not playing today. And Nick Lynch, 34 goals. We've barely spotted. Mullins here. Fall of the footy. Off hands. Quick snap there from Mullins. Out on the full. He's been lively early, Jonathan Mullins. Really hard to match up on, I think. Just one of those really slick goal sneaks. And he's very, very dangerous. Surprised we haven't seen a lot more of him at senior level this year. But Coburg have been really, really good. Smallest player on the park, Jonathan Mullins. Just 166 centimetres, the former Northern Territorian. Heading down the line here, Peel needs to punch there if they're to get the ball away here, Port Melbourne. Hands over the top, Peel in a two on one. Rayson could win it out, played for the free, no, he caught one high. It'll come back. Running past there, Matthew Pierce it was who just collected him as he ran past with the flight of the footy. The Borough fans very vocal about that free kick, Chris. Yep, filling up early as well, good Port Melbourne support this morning. Kick down the line there, looking for Anderson. Anderson marks strongly out near the boundary line under pressure from Johnston. Good young player, Ryan Anderson. He is. 55 around from goal. He tries to set it up here, looking for a mark, and the mark is taken by Tchaikovsky. Robert Tchaikovsky played a bit of seniors footy this year. Another former Western Jets player. 19 years of age. Very solid body for a teenager. 187 centimetres. Already 91 kilos. Left foot usually, quite reliable. Kicks him right on 50, very close to the man on mark. The kick on its way, just away to the left, one behind. So 4 8 32 Coburg, Port Melbourne 3 5 23. We've gone 15 and a half minutes in the second term of the VFL Reserves Grand Final. Certainly a thumping kick on that occasion, Chris. 
Got a really good purchase. Dalton, though. But Port Melbourne brings it into play and kicks short where he found his teammate there in Reese Thomas. He got the handball off to a player running by, which was Waldron. Waldron kicks out wide looking for Dwyer. Once again, they don't hit a target. The ball will be thrown in around 70, oh, 90 metres around from Coburg's goal. They're just going far too wide, Chris, not spotting up targets, and they're really making it difficult for themselves. Yeah, those running players, are, I do think they're giving good run there, Tristan. I just feel the delivery letting them down. A couple of skill errors that Port Melbourne players don't quite seem to be able to uh, execute their skills to their full potential this, uh, this morning. Exactly right. Foster in the ruck for Coburg. Did well that time. Got the tap. Little couldn't run onto it, however, and we'll have a throw in. We've already seen uh, Nana and Sutcliffe run wide and run loose out of the defence and rebound well, but just not working that occasion for Dwyer. Shallow throw in on that occasion. Foster got a good tap. Diving on the ball there is Little once again. And we'll have a third throw in. In the space of 10 seconds or so. Both teams struggling to clear it on the outer side here at MC Labor Park. The ball thrown back into play this occasion. The Rucks must be getting sick of this. Carroll, chance to run onto it for Port Melbourne. Got a good handball out to Waldron. Waldron just threw it on his boot and Pierce was in space. So a chance to launch an attack here, Port Melbourne. Gillam was trapped behind on that occasion. Could have given a free kick away. Not on that occasion. Coming out of defence for Port Melbourne was Sewell. He spotted up the man in the centre of the ground there in Rayson. Rayson ducks the ball under his arm and runs. Going to kick out wide, looking for his teammate there in D'Souza. D'Souza, ball didn't hit him. He had to chase after it and the boundary line beat them all. So good transition play once again by Coburg. But once again going too wide, they'll be throwing about 40 metres out from their goal. Just need to centre things up a bit, Coburg. Heading very wide. I noticed Nickel Inch down at ground about to come back on as well, Tristan. That's right. Well, they did it well through the centre, Coburg. Just have to be a little bit more direct to give their forwards every chance. Meanwhile, ball thrown back into play. Wrapped up there is a Port Melbourne player, and we'll have a bounce about 50 metres out from Coburg's goal. I think goal. the leading forwards from both sides so far have been equally guilty of heading out two wides towards the pockets. I mean, they're not heading out towards the, the flanks. They're actually heading right into the pockets. It's going to be tough angles even when they do get the footy. Well, I don't think they really need to. Pierce, meanwhile, throws the ball on his boot. No one at home for Port Melbourne. Farrelly, chance to gather. Gets the ball back to Foster, who kicks long inside 50. Back of the pack there for Coburg is racing. He's been busy in this second term. Looks to find a teammate. Does so now in Trakovsky. Trakovsky talk caught in two minds. Decided to go the kick in the end. Running onto it for Coburg. There is Cathal Kaur. He gathered after fumbling initially. Kicks inside 50 looking for Hughes. I think he copped a push. Umpire says yes. Henshaw pleading his case, but... He can argue as much as he like. I think that one might have been there. In fact, it's going to go the way of Mullins. And Mullins will take a free kick. This is his bread and butter. A chance to kick his second goal of the afternoon. So Mullins. Deliberate approach. Comes in now. Didn't look good on that occasion. He's hooked it and threw for one behind. He should have done better that time, John O'Mullins. Won't be happy with that effort. Just bring it back to the point. We're talking about the forwards leading to the pockets. Well, there's really no excuses, Chris, for them to do so. Plenty of space in both teams' forward line. Just lead straight up the guts. And I think they'll find themselves with a ball in their lap. So Dalton brings the ball back into play. Manoeuvring his man under the ball well was Nat Nixon on that occasion. He took a good mark. Kicks up towards centre wing. Looking for his teammate there in Peel. Peel spilt the mark. Could have been held umpire. Umpire said no. Trakovsky now. A chance for Coburg. Kicked the ball forward from whence it came. Mullins too slick on that occasion for Nat Nixon. Clever kick inside 50. And marking for Coburg there was D'Souza. Well, he's kicked one goal already from a, uh, a mark and lead style piece of play. One of the few to do so this afternoon. With the goal kicking we've seen so far, Tristan, this could go anywhere still. I think everyone will be praying, the Coburg fans at least. He comes in this time, does D'Souza. You said it. Mm. He's hooked it away to the right and threw for yet another behind. A little breeze to speak of as well. There's really no excuse for the poor kicking we've seen. It does swirl around a little bit at ground level here at MC Labor Park with the size of the stands, but uh, when it's as small a breeze as that, Really no excuse for not uh, kicking through the line of the footy and kicking the goals. Port Melbourne, first things first, they have to spot up a target. They don't on that occasion either. And Sewell, a chance to bring Coburg inside 50 once again. 
Another good kick though by Miles Saul. He's gone far too wide. Earns the shake of the head from Chris Weaver. And a free kick to Port Melbourne. Chris, I don't know if it's pressure. They should have settled by now, but both teams turning the ball over far too often, making it really difficult for themselves. Marking there for Port Melbourne was Waldron. He got the ball moving straight away to a teammate there in McGlynn. He kicked up forward looking for Carroll. Carroll couldn't mark, watched the ball in front of him. Gathering for Port Melbourne, cleverly there was Sutcliffe. He couldn't get an effective disposal away. Looking to kick around the body there for Coburg was clinging. His kick was cleverly smothered. And the ball's gone out for a boundary throw in. About 80 metres around from Port's goal. Between wing and half forward for the Borough. A ball thrown back into play. Who can get an effective clearance this time? It's going to go the way of Coburg. Coming through there for, Co uh, for Coburg is Vasilevsky. He did cleverly. Gets the handball over the top to the running race and he takes a bounce. Kicks inside 50. Over the head of Lynch though. And Port Melbourne a chance to relieve through Dalton. Oh no, don't know what he was thinking that time. Just threw the ball on his boot. Looking for the boundary line. It was his only friend. The umpire says no. Look to get a clearing kick, but we'll throw it in this time. Coburg 14-34, Port Melbourne 3-5-23. Heading on to 22 minutes, second turn. Back into play there. Tchaikovsky at the back to Mullins into an open goal. Under pressure, kicks the goal. So story of the morning so far. The hard ones have been kicked, the easy ones have been missed. But Jonathan Mullins there, making no mistake, at the fall of the footy, he read it perfectly. A beautiful Rovers goal. His second of the afternoon, the first multiple goal kicker of the game. Coburg stretched their lead out now to 17 points. They're 5 10 40. Port Melbourne 3 5 23. 23 and a half minutes into the second term. So, a few changes here. Carrick to run into the centre now. I've noticed they've got Curry and Ruck as well there, Tristan. Steve Foster taking a break, Coburg. They're getting the rotations done just before half time. Maybe their smaller fleet of players just trying to uh, get the legs over Port Melbourne. Out of the back here is Vasilevsky. Ran into trouble there. Gave it away. Port Melbourne, can they get the footy? They can't. Vas Vasilevsky in again. Under pressure there from Allen. Over the, his head over the footy there was Dwyer. Hands off to McGlynn now. Porter away. Around the body. They need a mark here. Carroll under pressure. He copped a push. It'll be paid. So Port Melbourne, they need to respond quickly here. Just in the, the throws of half time, 23 and a half minutes. I suggest, Tristan, this quarter won't go for too long. There have been just the two goals kicked so far. I think you're right, Chris. Wouldn't, wouldn't think it'd go much longer than 28 minutes or so, around that mark. So, Carroll, tough angle here. Notorious pocket to try and kick goals from. Right foot kick. Can he swing it in towards the goals? No, it's across the face for one behind. 3 6 24 then, Port Melbourne, trailing Coburg, 5 10 40. Almost approaching 24 minutes. The kick was almost impossible there. The breeze coming across the goals just took the ball away from that mark. Strange little kick in there. The grubber kick from Vasilevsky. Found Farrelly though under no pressure in the pocket. Kicks long. He'll look for McElain and McElain will mark. He'll run over the line of the mark now. Looking for someone to spot up long into attack. Wobbly old kick. Who's there? It's Lynch. Fall of the footy. Can he wheel round? Left foot kick now. Top of the square. Who's there? De Bruin. Will De Bruin try and rush it through? No, he tries to keep it in play. Does very well there, Sam De Bruin. Chance to get out of defence. Strong mark taken there by Johnston. So Johnston hands off to Allen now. Port could be away. Just can't rush it too much here. Centre wing position now. Up and under kick. Two on one. Two on zero there, in fact. Vasilevsky marks under no pressure. Poor approach play there from Port. Centre of the ground now. This is Little, very prolific possession getter in the first half, Nick Little. Heads wide to Robertson. Has a bounce now. He'll approach 50. Left foot kick here. Sam Robertson on its way. Faded away just late on. One behind. 5-11-41 now, Coburg. Port Melbourne, 3-6-24. 25-minute mark of the second term. Certainly had no trouble getting the distance on that occasion. Good young player is Sam Robertson. Ran inside 50, launched a long left foot kick. Just missed away to the left. Kicking now by Port Melbourne, found McGlynn. He wastes no time in kicking out wide, but he's got a teammate in Kane. Chance to gather, take a bounce as Chris Kane. Curry chasing hard, good chase by the big man. Kane, the pressure, made him cough up the ball almost. Sutcliffe gathered though. Carroll, a chance for Port Melbourne once again, he's coughed it up. And Robertson, this time on his half-back line, 
takes the relieving mark for Coburg. Disciplined play though, nonetheless. Tried to split up something at true centre half forward and make it more direct in the approach to goal. Kick long by Robertson. Flying high was Core, just waiting down at the bottom for Port Melbourne was Nat Nixon. He took a good mark. Coming through the centre of the ground now is Waldron. A chance to relaunch an attack for Port Melbourne. Not a good handball on that occasion. Nana had to wait. Coming through for Coburg on that time, that occasion is Little. Got the handball over to McElane. He got a clever handball over to Ryan Anson. Ryan Anson runs inside 50 and drills it. Well, Port Melbourne are going to pay if they muck around with the footy. Coburg, a very good football side. And they certainly made them pay on that occasion. Coburg, 6-11-47, leading Port Melbourne, 3-6-24. Just ticked over 25 minutes in this second quarter. Three goals to nothing in this term as well from Coburg. Three goals coming straight down the guts there. It's time to break this game open, you'd suggest, just at the moment, Coburg. Just a lot cleaner. Yeah. They might be making a few errors, but Port Melbourne just making an error with every attacking foray, it seems. More direct, aren't they? A lot more corridor footy coming from the Tigers this morning. A 23-point break now. Back in the centre. Port desperately need one before half-time. Bloomfield fell over just as he was about to get the tap. Down at ground there. Clever kick away by Carrick. Looking long. Dolson went back with courage. Couldn't mark. Mullins there. Hands off now. They're away once again here. Coburg out in the lead. Clever kick. It found Hughes. And Hughes marks 35 metres out from goal. I think it was great play that on that occasion by a little. Could have blazed away. Could have seen the goals up ahead and just had a shot. But kept his head. Got a low spearing pass kicking to Clay Hughes and found him on a good lead. Yeah, well balanced too. Kicked it with the outside of the right foot. Spotted up Hughes. The Richmond listed player here, Cleve Hughes. Unusual to see AFL listed players in the VFL Reserves competition, particularly during the finals when you have to qualify through a, uh, a quota of matches. But Cleve Hughes approaching now. 35 from goal. He didn't quite kick through the line of the footy. As a consequence, he misses. A bad miss there, letting Port off the hook. They double the sc their score, though, however, Coburg. It's 6 12 48, Port Melbourne 3 6 24. And we've played just on 28 minutes here in the second term. Zoning up here, Port. Need to get it clear. Long kick down the line. Bloomfield's a target. Coming in from the side will be Nixon. Went strongly. Unlucky not to take the mark. Racing there. Hands off to Curry. Who can he spot up here for Coburg? Into the forward line. 30 out. McElane. Can he win out the footy? He can. Needs support though. Finds it in Curry. The snap around the body. Will it be shepherded through? Just getting that quick touch there at the last second was De Bruin for one behind. Curry very busy in that little piece of play on that occasion. De Bruin brings the ball back into play for Port Melbourne. Backing back courageously there was McGlynn. He couldn't mark. Doing well was Little. Got the handball over to Rayson, who in turn got the handball to McElane. Had a shot on goal. Cleve Hughes marked right on the goal line and kicked a goal despite the pleas of the Port Melbourne saying they touched that one. In fact, I think they'll get a free kick as well from the centre, Coburg. After indiscretion from the Port Melbourne player, but great play on that occasion. McGlynn couldn't mark initially. Little. The ever busy Little got the handball over to race and McElane got the ball inside the goal square to Hughes and he kicked a very, very easy goal, as easy as he'd like to get anyway. No, ball coming back to the centre there, Tristan. Starting to be run a bit ragged here, Port Melbourne. Half time cannot come quickly enough. 7.13.55 the Tigers, Port Melbourne 3.6.24. Hughes' the second goal of the afternoon. Or is it coming downfield? I think you might have been right. It is. I was just consulting about what... The correct decision may be they might even get a second shot on goal here. Yeah, no, you're right, in fact. Umpire Richie in the centre there didn't get the call originally from his uh, other officiating umpire there in Troy McCarthy. It's only been spotted up now and Hughes to have a second shot at goal. So Hughes from the top of the goal square makes it academic, kicks two goals in the space of a minute. So Coburg skip out now to 8.13.61. Port Melbourne have almost stopped dead on 3.624. 30 minutes gone, the second term. It's really undisciplined play. He didn't need to do it. He may, may have been frustrated. He thought he touched it, but really no need to go lashing out, kicking the ball into the fence. So they're their own worst enemy at the moment, Port Melbourne. They are. Just on that score during the second quarter, Tristan, it's now five goals, nine to four behinds, Coburg's way. 
And Port Melbourne still to trouble the goal scorers in this second term. From the dying stages, costly goal or two to cough up for Port Melbourne. They find themselves trailing by 37 points. <laughs> right on the stroke of so both teams will go into half time having to consider a few things about the disposal in particular. Coburg will be the far happier of the two sides. They go in leading by 37 points. Coburg 8 13 61. Leading Port Melbourne 3 6 24. And Chris, you've got the goal kickers. Yes, five goals to none there during the second term. And at half time, goal kickers for Coburg, three goals to Hughes, two to Mullins, singles to Curry, to Souza, and Anderson. While for Port Melbourne, singles to Dwyer, Gillum, and Kelly. Half time here in the VFL Reserves Grand Final, thanks to True Energy. It's Coburg 8 13 61. Port Melbourne 3 6 24. We'll be back with the second half action in about 15 minutes' time. In the meantime there, Coburg, five goals, nine to four behind the second term, having set up a very strong platform for the second half of football. So ready for the resumption of the second half, the True Energy VFL Reserves Grand Final. Coburg by 37 points, 8-13-61 over Port Melbourne, 3-6-24. Five goals, nine to four behinds in that second term, really set it up for Coburg. And they'll be hoping for more in the third term and try and clinch that, clinch that Premiership Cup. Back in the centre now, it'll be Foster and Bloomfield to contest. Hands off there, it was Sewell who got it, away to core. Left foot kick under pressure. Two on one contest favours Port. I think there was two motions there. Free kick yep. to Coburg. Yep, good spot there, Tristan. So McGlynn couldn't get the free kick. It'll go the way of Little. Long into the forward line now. Nick Little spots up Sewell out of the corner of his eye. To ground, though. Chance of Port to break free. They do here. Hands over the top. They'll get it to Nainer. Nainer away to the centre wing position. Chasing it after here is Peel. Haven't seen much of him in the first half. Robertson beats him to it, however. <laughs> Handballs inboards to Keo, and Keo can get him clear. To Carrick now. Centre wing position, contests with Nainer. Well done to Rowan Nainer. Got to the footy, but didn't have support. Carrick recovered more quickly. Kicks to full forward. Out on the lead strongly was Curry. Bowled over two. Through there was Dalton. Dalton hands off. It could be away Port Melbourne. Got to use the ball cleanly, however. They finally get it back out to Nat Nixon and then Nainer to Bloomfield. Mr. Target calls at the back, needs support, racing over the top. Can he run onto it? 50 out from goal. Onto the right foot. Damien racing to the goal line. Which way will it go? Oh no. Free kick given away. Jonathan Mullins for the third time today into the back of an opponent. And right on the actual goal line, the free kick will go to Nat Nixon. So trouble early there for Port, but relieved, and they're away. Through Plymouth, he takes a bounce. Ball eludes him initially, still eludes him. Like he's got time to gather. Gets the handball inboard, where he found Kurt McGlynn. Kurt McGlynn looking to go through the centre of the ground. Spots up Bo Nixon. This is a more promising build-up by Port Melbourne. Kane now, a chance to get the ball moving forward. Surely umpire free kick there. Player was clearly pushed in the back by Farrelly. And we'll take a free kick. Chance to launch a really good attacking move here for Port Melbourne. One of those clever little professional free kicks out there by Farrell. He stopped the move, had to bring the ball back. Players back into defence now. Oh, they're away. Ball inside 50 for Port Melbourne. Flying from behind is Kelly. He couldn't mark. Clearing for Coburg that time was Riddle. Just threw it on his boot. Up forward and found Farrelly. But once again, Port couldn't find a target inside 50. Coburg a chance to rebound. Little. Been very busy. Enjoyed a very good game so far. He kicks up the line where he finds a sliding Tarkovsky on centre wing. Wastes no time. Kicks it over the top where he finds Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky was off. The umpires called him to play on. Tackled strongly and across the boundary line. He's saying, no, I didn't play on. I think he took a step or two. It'll be a throw in about 60 metres around from the Coburg goal. So Coburg starting this third term almost as strongly as they did the second. Punched out a play there by Kaur. It was clever. No one at the fall of the footy, however, as it was end up, ended up being overrun. Nixon punched away. Little as well in there over the boundary line. Need the first goal of the third term, Port Melbourne. Need to get some sort of score on the board. 21 scoring shots to nine. Coburg's favour. Back into play now. Tchaikovsky had front position. No 
No uh, recognisable ruckman up there. Nixon for the footy. Took, took Mullins away free from kick. it. Clear free kick. So Mullins, 30 out from goal. 45 degree angle here. Should have a shot from this pocket. Clear free kick there from Nixon. Man handled him badly. And Jonathan Mullins causing all sorts of problems still for Port Melbourne. Two goals, one for the afternoon. Jonathan Mullins had a couple of others that he's missed when he probably should have scored. Measured approach. Kick on its way here. And he's just pushed it away to the right. One behind. Nonetheless, Coburg first score of the third term. They're 8 14 62. Port Melbourne 3 6 24. Four minute mark of the third term. Well, I think it's just his presence that puts you under pressure as a defender. You're really always fumbly. Yeah. I'm hoping he's not around going to snatch it and snap a goal. So huddling up here, Port Melbourne. They need the outrider. They find it. They'll head towards Bloomfield. Can he get there in time? Poor kick. Hughes had front position. Dwyer did well, though, to recover. The Todd Middlest heads towards centre half forward now. Chases on. Who will we now? Carroll's got the leg speed. Can he beat Fowley to the footy? He can. Nudges it on to his own advantage. Held in there by Carroll out towards the boundary line. Fowley did very well on that occasion. Former Calder Cannon played under Robert Hyde in those premiership sides in the TAC Cup competition, Michael Farrelly. Did very well. He could have lost his feet. Would have been all over, but he did very well. Of course, played for Coburg three weeks ago in the seniors qualifying final as well, Michael Farrelly. Unlucky to be dropped, perhaps. To ground level, core. Quick kick out of the pack here. Who can chase after it? Two on one. They've got the numbers here, Port Melbourne, but they still don't win the footy. To the half forward line now. Mullins, once again out in front of the footy. Happy to see it over. We'll have a boundary throw in right on centre wing at the Pratt stand side of the ground. Five minutes played, third term. Coburg 62, Port Melbourne 24. That ball just about to be brought back into play. Foster and Bloomfield to go at it. Foster that time got front position. Tapped into the front, but no one at home for Coburg. The only man there was Kane. He looked to get a kick around the body. Off hands though. And once again out for another boundary throw in. Pretty even start to this third term. Port Melbourne desperately in need of the first goal. Rucks go at it once again. I'll give that one as well to Foster. He's been very good today. The Glynn for Port Melbourne threw the ball on his boot. Couldn't find a teammate, however, when they were throwing. Probably exactly the same position as the last one. So back in once again. Bloomfield too strong on that occasion. Did well. Coming through for Coburg was racing. He just looked to get the ball up forward. Mullins once again leading the race. Couldn't control the ball on that occasion. What a throw in, making this boundary on by do a lot of work. This time around 65 metres around from Coburg's goal. Gary Johnston's been moved off in Tristan and Nat Nixon now Mullins' direct opponent. So hard to match up against a small man. Big task for Nixon. Diving on the footy there is Port Melbourne player and earning the free kick. Did very well on that occasion. Ball's not coming out quickly. Coburg not keen to release it. Yeah, Tchaikovsky could get something away here if he's not careful. In fact, it was Carrick there at the full footy. Didn't seem pleased about giving the ball to McGlynn. Anyway, so McGlynn plays on straight away, gets the handball to Sutcliffe. Now they're caught in two minds once again. Sutcliffe's handball didn't find the mark in Kane. The pressure forced him to spill it. Now chance for Coburg's McElane. He kicks inside 50, probably too wide. In fact, it is too wide. Umpire's called out on the full. And the free kick to be taken by Bo Nixon for Port Melbourne. Perhaps just trying to second, play, second guess the play a bit, Port Melbourne. They're not going with instinct. Not going with the first option often enough. Nixon, if he kick. Good enough for, on that occasion for Port Melbourne was Dwyer. They're, he's, they're mucking around once again. Dwyer, a chance to gather. Dick cleverly got the handball over the back to Bo Nixon, who kept running. Running by is De Bruin. Worn closely there by Morelli. Morelli did well. Chance now, once again for Port Melbourne. Good kick up towards centre wing, and Rowan Nainer takes a good mark on a good lead. Peel now, running through the centre of the ground. Kicks long inside 50. Dean Kelly will have to fly. Fly he did, couldn't take the mark. Bloomfield couldn't get down to the ball, and the way for Coburg is Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky, a chance to launch yet another attack. Wobbly kick on that occasion. McGlynn did well to chop it off. A chance to gather. Kurt McGlynn, it took too long. Umpire's going to ping him. Well, he didn't know what to do. And there's a very strong tackle by that man, Little. He's been fantastic this afternoon, Chris. 
Close to best of field. We'll uh, be interesting to see how that is awarded at the end of the match. Kurt McGlynn is having to do it all on his own at the moment, though. He's not getting the support in the Shepherds and the one percenters when he goes in after the footy. He, Dwyer and Kane, probably the only three Port Melbourne players to consistently win the footy. When they do so, there's just not enough um, players at the contest to support them. Provide the Shepherds, block the runs on the taggers and allow them to get free. Exactly right, Chris. They just look like a back line of individuals at present, really making it hard for each other, not working. But it could cost them yet again. So Little comes in. This one's away to the right, however, and three for one behind. So Coburg, 8-14. Leading Port Melbourne, 3 6 24. We've gone nine minutes in this third term. Two behinds for Nick Little this afternoon. The results of his, uh, his play. Had a lot of footy, though. Probably the leading possession getter on the ground. Taking a long time here, Port Melbourne. They eventually go for the short option and Kane. Kane, almost a turnover here. No, Nana did well to block it off. Hands over the top now. This is Dwyer. Heads down the line. Kick, however, is poor. Will it stay in play? It won't. Beats his teammate there in Thomas out of play. And they're really heading too wide at the moment, Port Melbourne. No breeze to speak of. No need to protect the footy. They've just got to go down the corridor. Make the play themselves. Back into play here. At the back there, got the tap was Bloomfield. Did well. Crummer, though, on that occasion was for Coburg. It's Grayson who might pick himself up at the bottom of the pack. It was indeed there, Tristan. Done very well to get into the play since quarter time, Damien Rayson. And another stoppage. A whistle off play here. Yep, free kick's going to go Coburg's way. It'll go to McElane for the hold off the ball. I don't know if there was much in that one, but the umpire obviously saw something. So. Well, it was umpire McCarthy who made the call. He was a long way off the play. He was at centre half forward. Still blew his whistle, saw something. I'm, I'm not quite sure. In fact, it was umpire Ritchie. Nonetheless, McElane now kicks long to centre half forward. Pack of players to contest it. Punch of the ball here. It'll favour Coburg. Morelli being quiet. Hands off though to Robertson. Robertson will head wide to Curry. Curry now needs a ball to sit for him, but he's still in plenty of space. Sewell's ahead of him if he wants that option. He doesn't. He goes to Carrick, and Carrick marks 40 out from goal. It's going to be a 50 metre penalty as well. Nana had no attempt to play the footy. Sewell had the ball under control, and Nana deliberately barged him over. So a 50 metre penalty will take Carrick to the top of the square and this will be almost a Monty. He'll have to go back to the top of the square of course with Nana stand in the line. So Coburg to kick their ninth. there will be six unanswered goals if this is the case for Coburg. Carrick looking for his first goal of the afternoon. Comes in now, makes no mistake and Coburg kicks six in a row. It's 9-15-69 Coburg. Port Melbourne 3-6-24. We've played 11 and a half minutes in this third term. Only the first goal of the quarter, Tristan, and that makes it doubly difficult now for the Borough. Well, it's what the Borough didn't want. They made it very, very hard for themselves trying to get out of defence and really undisciplined act there by Nana. He's been one of their better players, I'd say, today. Lively across the half-back flank, but not the right decision on that occasion. Made a tough kick for goal from about 45 metres out of certainty. So a trail by 45 points. And to say they needed the next one would be a drastic understatement. So ball back in the centre. Bounce favoured Foster. Doing well for Port Melbourne was Dalton. He couldn't get the tap down to anyone in particular. Wrapped up there. Two players and we'll have yet another bounce. Nana on to Rayson at the moment too as well, Tristan. So just moving him back onto the footy. Rayson's found himself in the game in his last two quarters or so. Ball knocked ahead. Coburg's attacking side. Gathering well was Core. Got the ball onto Carrick. I think he took too long and it was pinged. For Port Melbourne now, a chance to reload. Once again, a turnover and taking a good defensive mark for Coburg was Vasilevsky. He plays on, kicks out wide looking for Ryan Anderson. Will the ball sit for him? Yes, it will. He gathered but was immediately tackled. Port Melbourne there through Pierce. Didn't get an effective handball. Coming through strongly was Stephen Foster. He's been very good this afternoon. Kicks inside 50. Good spearing pass kick and found Hughes on a strong lead. Called to play on now. Gonna have to kick inside 50. Numbers are plenty for Coburg. And taking a Nick good Lynch. strong mark there is Nick Lynch. Yep, kicked 34 uh, goals in the VFL this season. Nick Lynch being very quiet today. Spent a lot of time on the bench. Good spot up though from Hughes. He waited, waited for the right option. Two or three presented for him and eventually went to Lynch. He's quite a... I, I, I don't want to put the moz on him, but he's a good kick for goal, this boy. 
We'll wait and see what he does on this occasion. Comes in, Chris. What do you know? You give him the wrap. We did it earlier in the game. And they always let you down. So that one didn't even trouble the scorers. But look, the difference between the two sides, we saw Foster and Anderson working together on the far side. Haven't seen too many efforts like that from the Port Melbourne side. And I think that's the difference between the two sides. You just know when you praise someone for their kicking at goal, they're just going to let you down with the next one. Seems to be the way of things. Kicking to play now. Long down the line. Peels at the back. He needs to get to this one. He doesn't. It's out of play. We're going to have a boundary throw in. 75 out from goal. Port Melbourne still heading wide. Not getting numbers to the contest just at present. They haven't kicked a goal since quarter time. Last time that happened and they kicked a goal, it precipitated the fight on the siren. Hasn't been much fight from them since then, however. That occasion, Dalton got the tap down to Nana over the top here. Running after it there is Kelly. Bounced the wrong way. Out for a throw in. Last week when they won by 54 points, Port Melbourne. Dean Kelly kicked five. So did Andrew Gillum. Seen very little of both of those players this afternoon. Right out of it. Two players that perhaps need to go onto the ball. Get some momentum going for the Borough. Nainer here. Hand pass there. Hard hands. Put his teammate under pressure and wasn't taken. Hands off there. Klingon. In and under the footy. Hands off there to a teammate running past in Carrick. This is Curry now. Needs the ball to bounce kindly for him. It does. Mullins there. Well punched away there by Peel. Back to Curry now. Outside 50. Swings around onto the right. At the back is racing. Almost hands in the back. It wasn't paid. Ground level here. Need the footy to, to go from here is Henshaw. Near the boundary line. He'd be happy to see it over, I'd suggest. It's blocked his kick and it will just go over now. 40 out from goal. So, very scrappy getting it out of defence, Port Melbourne. No one at centre half back run into position. Defenders under pressure. Fall of the footy here. Who can gather cleanly? Underneath it there is Rayson in the back. He'll get a free kick right on the arc of 50. Peel it was into him on that occasion. Hands off now to Lynch. Onto the left foot. Who will he spot up? Needing to come after it here is Curry. Hands off. Wanted to go for Klingon, but cut off by Allen. Back to Allen now. Needs to get clear possession away. Kelly it is racing after it. Vasilevsky beats him to it. Numbers at the contest this time, though, to Port Melbourne. And Pierce can take a bounce to centre half forward. Front position, though, not the mark taken on this occasion by Port. Strong mark at the back. And Coburg, as it done so often today, can go clear. Riddle now, out towards Carrick. Carrick, the centre half forward, needs a mark. It's taken here by Lynch. Really coming into the game now in this third term, Nick Lynch, in front of a teammate there in Hughes. Push put on this Port Melbourne opponent. And Kelly is clear to Pierce. He's made space now in wing position, out of side. Kicks towards centre half forward and Nixon. And Nixon can slow up the play. Looking for Dwyer. Dwyer runs into space. Went with one hand. Should have gone with two. It'll go near the boundary line now. They can't keep it in. Well, they've a boundary throw in 30 from goal. Disappointing there, Sam Dwyer. Could have taken that mark. They made a real meal of it. They just had to spot up Dwyer. He was in acres of space inside his forward 50. It's not often you get that opportunity. Port desperate need of a goal. Nixon missed the target. So Bloomfield against Foster. Bloomfield it is. Gets a tap to the ground level. They need someone to burst through. They can't do so. It's wrapped up once again. 30 out from goal. Making hard work of this port. There's a perfect chance there for Sam Dwyer. They just feel that they might be made to rue for that error. This is already the second stoppage since that dropped mark. Back into play now. Foster got the tap. He'll hit it out towards the boundary line. Vasilevsky front position. Can he keep it in? Does very cleverly. Hands over the top. Look for Klingon. Got it as far though nonetheless as a teammate in Robertson. And then back to Vasilevsky. To Mullins now. Swings around. Does the U-turn. Kicks towards half forward. Needs the forward line option. There's going to be a push paid. It'll go the way of the man in front. He was played downfield, in fact. Mullins decked after he kicked it. OK. It'll be Cleve Hughes then who'll take the footy. 65 out from goal. Needs a forward line option. Leading out the goal square there was Lynch. He headed in boards as a consequence. Teammate leading to Ellie. Morelli over the top of the footy. Will we have a bounce? No. Holding the footy, the umpire says. Umpire Brown says that Morelli did nothing more than dive straight on top of the footy. No, he's paid it the way of Coburg. Gee, blindsided we were from this position. Morelli then to full forward at the back of the pack. There's going to be a free kick. Advantage paid. Cathal Paul kicks the goal. His first of the afternoon. Coburg's 10. And the margin out past the half century. They're 10-15-75 Coburg. Port Melbourne 3-6-24.
19 and a half minutes in the third term, Tristan. Well, Chris, I thought the same as you. I thought Morelli was the one to dive on the ball. Interesting decision. I thought when, they, when he was pinged, I thought it was no surprise Port Melbourne to get a free kick, but it went the other way. And Coburg got yet another goal, so they won't be complaining. The Port Melbourne fans might. Been scoreless now, Tristan, since about the 18 minute mark of the second term, Port. Stop dead. Haven't managed to kick a goal since the first quarter, so really struggling. So back in the centre, once again, it's going to be Dalton and Foster. Foster yet again won the ruck contest. Ball wrapped up at the bottom of the pack. I think it's Carrick and Pierce there. And we'll have a secondary bounce, as we so often see in the VFL. And halfway through this third turn. Interesting, interesting to see now that Waldron has been moved on to Little to try and cut off his run as well. I mean, very good Little. Have to stem his influence. Chance once again to bomb it inside 50, that man. Mullins will fly. Fly he did. Crashing the pack hard was Hughes. No one could mark. Pack forms. I think, um, think the umpire will have to bounce. He will. And we will have that bounce 45 metres out from Coburg's goal. The smaller man there, the smallest man in the field, Mullins, had front position, had the big tall forward, Hughes over the top of him. Perhaps not the perfect setup there for Coburg, but they still keep it inside 50. Bounce down this time. Peel to do the ruck work against Tchaikovsky. Give it to Tchaikovsky. Running through for Coburg is that man, Little. Well, he's kicked two behind still now. Probably the toughest one of all, Chris. Managed to dob, so... Well-deserved goal for Little on that occasion. 11-15-81 Coburg, 3-6-24 Port Melbourne, ticking into time on third term. Tristan, this game certainly run away from Port Melbourne now. 26 scoring shots to nine. And Little, just looking through my stats here, the eighth individual goal kicker already for Coburg. This has turned to a procession for them at the moment. Back in the centre now, Curry it is, it goes for the tap, up against Dalton in ruck, Dalton had to do his own roving work, only as far on that occasion though, as a Coburg player in, Tri in uh, Tchaikovsky, up towards half forward, D'Souza, swings around onto the left, looking for Mullins, over his head, not hard to do that at 166 centimetres, and Alan clears, out towards Nixon, and Nixon marks it, centre wing, Elliot stands side, hands over the top now, out to Dwyer, running onto it once again is De Bruin. Tripped as he fell, um, perhaps unlucky enough to get a free on that occasion. Dwyer now needs someone, heads in board. There'll be a turnover, three on zero. It's Coburg's way, it's Carrick taking the clear mark. So Carrick switches on if he wants. He decides against it and heads down the line. Macklin at the back, can he get it? At the fall of the, of the footy, kept his eye on it. He'll kick long into the forward line now. Needs a strong lead and he finds it. And Coburg marking here in Lynch. So Nick Lynch, yet to kick a goal this afternoon. Mentioned, of course, his strong season. Will he kick this one, Chris? I don't know. I'm not going to say anything after last time. Kick on its way. It's fading away. But nonetheless, he still squeezes it through for a goal. So Nick Lynch kicks his first of the afternoon. Ninth individual goal kicker for the Coburg Tigers. They move out to 12-15-87. Port Melbourne 3624 ticking on to 22 minutes third term. A great brand of football, Cobra. Just it's well, it's far easier for them going forward. They're moving the ball directly. Fluent running football. It's what you like to see. And they're certainly putting the scoreboard pressure on. So good performance here by the Coburg boys. Lack of an option at centre half forward for Port Melbourne cost them dearly. The turnover came. Carrick, one of three players in position for Coburg when none were there for Port Melbourne. Too easy on the uh, the approach play for Coburg, and they finished it off well. So it's Coburg by 63 points, back in the centre. Not a good bounce. Dalton favoured. But now Little, a chance for Coburg. Nice deft kick over the top to Rayson. A chance to reload once again. Kicks deep inside the forward line, but this time Bloomfield filling the hole takes it. Much needed relieving defensive We said in the Melbourne. opening term that he'd had to play, play some time late in the game in defence. He's having to play everywhere at the moment, though, at the moment. And maybe it's come a little bit too late with Port Melbourne trailing by 11 goals. Doing well on that occasion was Nat Nixon. He got away from a few tackles. Wobbly punt kick that time was good enough to find Pierce. He handballed off to Gillum. Gillum kicked inside 50 and found his teammate there in Dean Kelly. So a chance for Port Melbourne to trouble the scorers for the first time in a fair while, Chris. 
Yeah, been, uh, my, by my reckoning, about 37 minutes of footy. It was about the 18 minute mark of the second term that they last scored, Port Melbourne. And not a good day for Port Melbourne. We'll see if Dean Kelly can kick this one. He comes in, he pumps it through. So Dean Kelly kicks another goal, his second of the afternoon. And Co uh, Co Port Melbourne, should I say, moved to 4 6 30. Trailing the Coburg Tigers 12 15 87. We've gone 23 and a half minutes in this third term. So, first goal since quarter time for the Borough. In the meantime, Coburg have kicked nine. Gillam and Kelly linking up on that occasion. They kicked 10 between them last week against Williamstown. Just three between them so far this afternoon. It's been a disappointing performance from the Borough. Not a happy day at the office. Back into play now. Tap down here. This is Dwyer at the fall of the footy. Kicks long. This is better from Port, but on that occasion, Riddle read it best off the boot and he took the mark. Hands off now to Robertson, running wide. He's got Curry in position here, centre wing. Sewell's in support. It'll beat both of them to the line. I'll have a boundary throw in. 24 minutes gone, third term. Coburg 87, Port Melbourne 30. 27 scoring shots to 10. Back into play now. Who'll contest? Curry has to go the ruck work here for Port, but still for Coburg, but still wins out. Back of the pack here is Carrick now. Kicks long. Centre half forward. Plumen has to go. Did so. Dropped the mark, however. Can Cathal call win it out? Two on one. Tries to break the tackle. He can't. We'll have a bounce. 60 out from goal for Coburg. Cathal core been very prolific possession getter. Set them up well going forward. Some of those kicks finding marking options, particularly during that second term run. Went without it there. <clears throat> Comes to the fall of the footy now. Sorry, Chris, I'll take it off you. Coming through strongly there for Coburg is Morelli. Got the handball back to Sam Robertson, who got the ball on to Klingen. Back to Robertson. Two, overdid the handball on that occasion and Port a chance to go forward. Looking for Gillam on that occasion. Ball went over his head. And taking the relieving mark for Port Mal uh, for Coburg, should I say, is Josh Riddle. He kicks inboard and finds Robertson once again. He wasn't manned up on. Comes through the centre of the ground. Found his teammate there in Miles Sewell, who has a shot on goal. I'd be happy with that one. Probably should have done better. Hooks it away to the left and through for one behind. So Coburg 12 16 88. Letting Port Melbourne 4 6 30. And he was off balance as he kicked then, Miles Sewell. Cost him dearly. Could have gone back and taken a, a shot at goal. Ball back into play by Port Melbourne. Chance for Cathal Core for Coburg. Got the handball. Over the top to a teammate, Klingen, very cleverly on that occasion. Now chance for Coburg once again to apply pressure for Port Melbourne. Filling the hole there very well. And being paid the mark is Bloomfield. Very strong in defence, Reese Bloomfield. Keep calling his name. One of the few to really uh, succeed and impress for Port Melbourne so far. Plimmon, hands off now. He'll get it back here, two and one. No, he'll run into Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe gets it in the finish. Punched away there. Centre wing still. This is Plumen once again. Oh, caught one late. Went down. Hands put now. Chain of handballs, Port Melbourne. Still centre wing. Fiddling about with it here. Dwyer now. Needs to go to long kick. He does. Kelly's the option. Can Kelly mark? Trying to overhead. Usually good in that, that way. Couldn't mark on that occasion. Riddle now. This is Vasilevsky. Deep in defence still. He spots up a teammate in boards. This is Rayson and he goes to him. Rayson heads wide. Got a teammate now. He tried to go to in Farrell. He turned over on the kick was poor. Centre of the ground. Pushing it back. It'll go the way of Port and Monteith. Called to play on advantage to Peel now. Peel dives over the footy. Did he drag it in? We'll wait for umpire Richie's call. Out of the back of the pack now. Back to Monteith. Did well to regather. Hands over though. Not only as far as Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky can drive Koberg back into attack. Two on one though is poor. And it's going to be a free kick there, copping one high on the push for Port Melbourne. Deep in defence, it looks like Henshaw. Kicks into the corridor of the ground, looking for Dalton. Dalton marks, decides to play on now. Corridor footy here, long and direct. Carroll it was, had it punched away there by Riddle. Out towards the boundary line, the players will see it over. We'll have a boundary thrown on the arc of 50. Dying moments of this third term. Ticking on to 28 minutes. Coburg 12-16, Port Melbourne 4-6. Port Melbourne still looking for one more to keep their heads high. Ball thrown back into play. Curry doing the ruck work that time for Coburg. Looked to get the ball down to Farrelly. He couldn't gather. Doing well as the Port Melbourne player there. The boundary line beats all concern. We'll have a throw in around 70 metres around from Port Melbourne's goal. 
Paul Curry, interestingly, Tristan, having to do a lot of the ruck work now, particularly down in defence. They've uh, taken that away from Steve Foster. They've got the opening goal of the game, Paul Curry, showing some versatility. He's doing well in the ruck. Paul back into play. No one can get clear on this occasion. Umpire's plucked out a free kick. It's going to go the way of Coburg. That will be taken by Morelli. Waste no time. Hands the ball off to a teammate coming through the centre of the ground looking to mark. He's clinging. Once again, tapped it to a teammate over there in Trakovsky. Got a handball onto McElane who found the running Farrelly. Farrelly launches a long bomb inside 50. Could have been a push there against the Coburg play. Yes, there was. And Port Melbourne a chance to clear. Nana takes two bounces and kicks up towards centre wing and spots up a teammate in Dean Kelly. Ran hard from the forward line. Kicks over the top now and finds Peel. Look at this, five Port Melbourne players in almost no space whatsoever. They need to make proper leads here, Port. Give something to lead to. And they have to retreat and going to be called to play on now. Sutcliffe now on centre wing for Port Melbourne. This one's a better kick and spots up Monteith. Mentioned he's a prolific ball getter, hasn't been very busy today. Monteith now unloads long to the top of the square. Backing back there for Port Melbourne there is... I think it's Reese yeah, Thomas. Reese Thomas giving away the free as well as he fell. He pushed the hands to the back of his Coburg opponent. Well, I thought it was Keo backing back. No, they've paid it the opposite way. Keo backing back may have taken his eye off the oh. footy and impeded Reese Thomas on that occasion. So Thomas should kick this one. Comes in, 10 metres out, makes no mistake. So Port Melbourne moved to 5 6 36 and trailing Coburg 12 16. 88, but they've managed to kick a few goals this term. A slightly bright note for the Borough boys. Success of goals for Port Melbourne. I thought that one there could have perhaps gone either way, but uh, Thomas, he was the one who kept his eyes on the footy all the way, and he was the one who was rewarded with a free kick. His first of the afternoon in this term, however, it's still been Coburg's play. Four goals three to two goals straight. Still a 52-point lead. 12-16-88 to 5-6-36. 30 and a half minutes played third term. Tchaikovsky off for a rest, as is Matthew Pearce for Port. And back in the centre, it'll be Dalton and Curry to contest in ruck. Up now, favours Dalton. Got the tap. Klingon tried to win it out, only as far as Waldron. Hands off now to Carroll. Over the top. This is Kane. Needs to run onto it here. Under pressure. Spun out of one tackle. Kicked the full forward, but Keo was there. Good wrestle against his opponent in Thomas, and he made up for that last error. Kicks wide now to Klingon, has the footy in front of him, 55 out, teammate coming across to help as D'Souza, however neither can gather cleanly, it's over for another boundary throw in. Coburg, big day for this club, we mentioned their seniors in action in the seniors in the, uh, the, the VFL Grand Final, first time since 89 for them in the big, uh, in the big one, can they get a flag in the resis, looking that way at the moment. Grand level, players trying to burst through with Farrelly and Carroll. Carroll it was who tried to win the footy, came out the back of the pack. Coburg tried to keep it in, turnover to Port now and Waldron. Waldron, bulks a tackle here, needs support in boards. He goes to it in Plimmon. Plimmon, what can he spot up? Wobbly old kick, it only goes as far as Rayson who succeeds in dropping the mark. Hands off now, at the back of the pack it was Robertson. Robertson's a centre win. Mark is taken by Nixon, but that is three-quarter time here at MC Labor Park in the VFL Reserves Grand Final, thanks to True Energy. It's Coburg, 12-16-88, Port Melbourne, 5-6-36. Those goal kickers to three-quarter time for Coburg. Three to Hughes, two to Mullins, singles to Curry, Cord, to Souza, Little, Lynch, Anderson and Carrick. Well, for Port Melbourne, two to Dean Kelly leading the way, singles to Dwyer, Gillam and Reese Thomas couple of minutes will be the beginning of the fourth term but three quarter time repeating that score it's Coburg by 52 points convincing display so far by the Coburg Tigers in this reserves grand final three quarter time they lead by 52 points 12-16-88 to Port Melbourne, 5-6-36. One hand on the Premiership Cup so far for the boys from the Coburg City Oval. Can they keep it going during the final term? Kicking to the left of screen, of course. 
And up in ruck, it will be Foster, the contest against Bloomfield. Tap favoured Foster. Ground level still tried to barge his way through. Couldn't do so. Allen the kick forward for Port. Piggybacking a uh, free kick there. Well, go the way of Coburg. Gillen went far too early over the top of Riddle. So Riddle out wide now. Needs a running option. This is Robertson. Done very well getting space across wing position today. Raking left foot kick to full forward. Mullins there, too short. Got to push, however, umpire McCarthy says. And Mullins will get the free. Well, 45 metres out from goal. He'll test him for distance. So he pops it up here. Looking for Hughes at the back. And Hughes taking the mark. Henshaw reckons he might have uh, copped a push there. But it wasn't seen. And as a consequence, Hughes can line up for his fourth of the afternoon. Cleve Hughes, the only AFL-listed player playing this, after, this, this afternoon. Quite a reliable shot. Three goals won so far for him. Measured approach now. We'll kick from about 30. Kick on its way. Goal umpire does not move. So Coburg starting this term as they've started all the other terms with a goal. They move out to 13-16-94. Port Melbourne a 5-6-36. We've gone a minute and a half in the final term. Interesting option that time by Mullins electing to go over the top. Probably tested uh, for the journey that time. He had to kick from outside 50. I thought on that occasion Hughes was just too strong. He was caught behind, managed to get good position against Henshaw and took a good mark. Ball back in the centre. It's going to be Bloomfield and the impressive Foster, I have to say. I've been very impressed with his game this afternoon, Chris. Have indeed. Got the taps well. I'm not sure about his second effort. He I'm not sure he's that great below the knees just at present, but he's a, uh, certainly a maturing ruckman. I think he's given them first use of the ball for the majority of the what, majority of the day, should I say. Kane got the handball out to Pierce, who kicks the ball inside 50 for Port Melbourne. Wrestling there is Kelly and his opponent there in Vasilevsky. Coburg a chance to clear. Carrick in space if the ball sits for him. It won't do so. It goes over the back. Brian Anderson now a chance to kick inside 50. Hughes did well below his knees. Wheels around, kicks a left foot kick in up towards goal. Mullins, fortuitous goal, you might say, but Mullins was in the right place at the right time, and he did the job. So two goals in the space of a minute for Coburg. They stretched their lead out to 64 points. Coburg 14-16, 100, leading Port Melbourne 5-6-36. Read it best there, Mullins, perfect crummer's goal. Fleet of foot, he's able to change direction quickly against the taller players. Got to the ball of the footy and ran into an open goal. 64 points now the margin, back in the centre. Starting to unravel a little bit now for Port Melbourne. Rucks go up, neither got a clear tap. Down the ground though, it'll be roved here. Pierce dropped it at first, had to kick off the ground. To any advantage, no. Riddle barges his way through, went past two tackles, caught one high, lost the footy. Still on the ground at behind play as well as Riddle. Play stopped up, Kane. Trying to shepherd the ball. Needs support, however. Pierce dives in with him. Drags it in Matthew Pierce. I'll have to get it out here. Dropped it. Got it again. Hands over the top here. To Dwyer now. He's tried hard this afternoon for Port, but not so much effect. Centre half forward. Now punching there and crumbing is Nainer. Nainer to full forward. It's Kelly out in the lead. Will the ball fall for him? Needs support. Hands off now to Dwyer. Dwyer changes direction. U-turns. Back to Kelly now. 45 from goal. Kelly did well to shrug away the challenge. Hands off here. Needs to go after it. There was Dalton. Dalton to Dwyer. Dwyer the snap across the face of goal on the check side. Made nothing of it. Out of bounds. We're going to have a throw in. 15 around from goal. So Riddle it was. Josh Riddle cut one high. Got back into the play though. No concern there. At the fall of the ball, there was Foster. He got the tap away to a teammate running past him, Farrelly. Farrelly's kick, however, he's hit row Z with that one. And Port with a chance to rebound back into attack. You've got to wonder, don't you, what Troy West would have said at three-quarter time to his Borough Chargers. Perhaps just win the final term. Long down the line, Kelly marks just inside the boundary line. It's going to be a tough angle here for Dean Kelly. Usually uh, a fairly good set, set shot. This one will really test him here. Deep in the pocket. It is, however, the right side for a right footer. Will he try and improve the angle here? He does. Kicks around his body. Kick on its way just across the face for one behind. So Dean Kelly. Two goals, two now to him. Port Melbourne moved to 37. Still trailing Coburg 100. Five-minute mark of the final term. 
almost been the shining light up for Dean Kelly for Port Melbourne. Small player, but he's been their real go-to man. So he's done fairly well. A fairly poor team today, it must be said. Vasilevsky brings the ball back into play quickly. Coburg now. Morelli spilt the mark. Got time to gather, however. Pressure applied by Dalton. Didn't affect the handball, however. Coming through the centre of the ground is Miles Sewell. He launches a kick long inside 50. Hughes managed to get away from his opponent. Too easily, too strong on that occasion, Cleve Hughes. Needs a chance to go back and has a set shot. Doesn't choose to. It this time goes short and finds Damian Rayson on a good lead. He's going to kick over the top as well. Miles Sewell kept running and takes the mark about 25 metres out. Up against the boundary line, tough kick for a right footer. We mentioned the deep pockets here at MC Labor Park. It'll be a test, but really, you've got time to play around with it, don't they, Chris? They do indeed. That ball won in contention there. Coburg have been better at two things over Port this, this afternoon, well, two in particular. Come back to after the kick. Sewell comes in. Won't trouble the scorer, has gone across the face. Looking to mark there for Port Melbourne was Waldron. He couldn't mark and rushed through for one behind. They've been particularly good at uh, their tackling, making the tackle stick, and also they're running hard into position, trying to chase up to second and third efforts and further contests up the ground. Port now, under defence here, head towards wing position. The kick on that occasion only favoured Foster. It was a poor option by De Bruin. He can get it back here. No, he can't. Free kick will go to Johnston anyway for a good tackle. Back to De Bruin now. Almost playing off one leg. You can see very heavily strapped on the right leg. Hands over to Sutcliffe. And a very quiet second half so far, Brad Sutcliffe to Allen. Forced to wait for the hand pass. Long into attack, kicked off one step. Kelly it was. Front position, no players in support, so Sewell wins out. To Farrelly now. Called to play on after the teammate was dumped behind play. Farrelly to the far wing. He's got Hughes. Hughes made ground well from full forward. And Hughes marks. Looks to D'Souza. D'Souza, the short option. He'll wait up for play. He'll look up for a strong option. He'll go the lateral option instead and go to McElwain. Barely went forward that kick. McElwain now, the centre half forward. Carrick, one of the smalls, slips as he kicked. Oh, good mark taken by Allen. Reflex juggling mark in the end. Allen now to wing position. He's got Sutcliffe out in support here. Sutcliffe, McElwain, will he go around him? No, tries to kick around his body. Does so to Dwyer now. Dwyer. Bolt one tackle, runs to 55, a long kick to the top of the square. Who will it favour? At the back was Dalton, couldn't mark. It'll go over for a boundary throw in, 10 around from goal. Good fly, but uh, Dalton had all the work to do at the back position there and couldn't take the mark. Eight minutes now into the final term. Crowd starting to fill up as you can see here at MC Labor Park. Thomas does the ruck work in two minds of what to do. Took it to ground, no one crumbed. Waldron was there. Comes out the back of the pack though. Coburg at favours once again, as it has so often today. Carrick has to wait. Oh, courage there. Both players went for it. Loose now. Nainer it is. He's got the legs. Will the ball sit for him? In his back there on that occasion was Tchaikovsky. And Nainer will get the free kick. Hands off now to Johnston. Johnston looking for someone inside Ford 50. Kicks over Thomas's head. Poor delivery. They're away now, Coburg. Racing. Hands off. No. Decides to go himself. Has a second bounce here to the centre of the ground. Kicks on the full forward. There's no one home for them. And a good mark taken by Nat Nixon on the last line of defence for Port Melbourne. Switches play now and finds his namesake there in Bo Nixon, who tucks the ball under his arm and loafs out of defence. Kicks wide this time. Finds Pierce, paid the mark. I thought it might have hit the deck. Kicked up forward towards centre wing, looking for Bloomfield. He couldn't take the mark. Kicked forward by Coburg, to no one in particular, and Bo Nixon could take a relieving mark. Kicked inboard and found Allen. Allen now kicks across ground to Gary Johnson. Haven't seen a real lot of him this afternoon. Kicks inside forward, 50. Dalton on a good lead. Takes a strong mark. Plays on straight away. Wasn't a good kick. The kick was smothered. It's lucky though for Port Melbourne. Found Kelly. Had a shot on goal. No, they really made a meal of it. Touched through that time. I think it was McGlynn and yeah. Vasilevsky on that occasion. Vasilevsky brings it back into play straight away. Finds Farrelly about 35 metres out from his defensive goal. He kicks out wide. Coburg a chance to reload. Kick comes up long, looking for Little. Been very busy. We mentioned Waldron was brought onto him in the third term. 
Glenn. Well done there, too, on that occasion from uh, Brendan Waldron. They were away there if Little won that contest. Waldron pushed it out of play, back to a neutral ball situation. Good discipline play there. Ball back into play. Foster was the only Ruckman to go up, so he got the tap. Volleyball style, favoured Coburg. Chance to reload once again. The big man Foster just throws the ball on his boot. Inside 50 now, backing back for Port Melbourne and doing very well on that occasion was Nat Nixon and he took a defensive mark. Heads wide now, the option is Pierce. Pierce marks, 50 out from defensive goal, kicks around the body. He's got a player in space, it's Allen, has to wait for it, gets it at the second attempt, long to full forward. At the back is Kelly, took a bump bounce, half volley. Back in the plane now, that was Carroll, hands off, needs support here to Kane. Over the top was McGlynn in fact, to Pierce. To his forward 50 now, he's run forward to the play. Mark taken the second attempt by Carroll. And Carroll should go back and have a shot here. He'll be about 25 out from goal. Marcus Carroll kicked just the one behind this afternoon. Drifted in and out of the play. Started the game very strongly in that opening term. Not much from him since then, however. Kick on its way is a good one. So Port Melbourne registered their first goal of the final term. Two goals to one, in fact, in this final term, Coburg's way. And they still retain that lead. It's Coburg, Coburg by 57, 14, 17, 101. Port Melbourne, 6, 8, 44. We've got 11 and a half minutes in the final term of the True Energy VFL Reserves Grand Final for 2007. Coburg about to get the champagne flowing, at least for the first, hope for their case, the first time today. We'll wait and see what happens in the... The big seniors clash a tad later. It's going to be a good victory for the Coburg Tigers today in the VFL Reserves Grand Final. Ball back in the centre. It's going to be Dalton and Foster to go at it. Foster once again got the tap, looking down there for Klingon. He couldn't gather. Doing well with Sutcliffe for Port Melbourne. Bit of a hospital handball though. Sold his teammate into a bit of trouble. He might take a free <coughs> kick. In fact, he's given it away for a high fend off. Foster will take it. He handballs to Race New, kicks inside 50. Hughes in acres of space. Baffles me how a key forward like that, Chris, can find so much space inside forward 50. And Hughes has a chance to go back and kick his fifth goal of the afternoon. Has just ball watching a bit there, uh, young Jared Dalton. Got caught out of position, and once he lost touch, Hughes in the clear. It's just funny because Dalton contested the ruck contest initially and was forced to go back. Meanwhile, Hughes comes in. Crosses the 50 arc. It's got the journey, but not the accuracy. And three for one behind for Cleve Hughes. So four goals, two now to Hughes. 14-18, 102 Coburg. 6-8-44, Port Melbourne. Hands off here, Nainer, the kicking maker. Off to a teammate there. He's got players running past here in Nat Nixon. Goes down the line. Thomas couldn't grab it cleanly. There'll be a turnover once again. Foster. Hands off here, they're away. This is Cathal Core now. Kick is well smothered there by Pierce. He's tried hard all this afternoon. Copying one high. The free kick will come back to Ryan Anderson. Monteith the transgressor. Pierce has to stand the mark. Kick across goal now. Centre half forward. Across the leading target for Souza. Nana recovers best. Hands off here. They need support. Klingon. He's got to Souza. One on one contest. Which way will D'Souza go? Backwards with a hand pass. He's got support there in McKellum. McCallum, hands off now to Klingon, long towards the top of the square. Who's there? Bo Nixon for Port. Combines now with namesake Nat Nixon and they're out of defence. One bounce, past 50, looks for Sutcliffe over his head, went with one hand. Can he keep it in? He can. He's, cor he's corralled in against the boundary line. And Carroll in front position. Gee, thought he was unlucky there, Carroll, not to get the free kick for the push. Hands off it is though. Coburg to 70 out from goal. Long kick. They need an option at the top of the square. Curry running back with a fly to the ball. Takes a strong mark. Paul Curry there. Backs back with courage, Tristan. Fly to the ball. Didn't know where the pack was. It collected him. Absolutely Still kept grab. strong and took the grab. Fantastic grab. Four players flew on that occasion. I thought someone from behind might fly. Look for the, the specky. But Curry just backed back bravely and took a very strong mark, as he said. Was presented strongly all day, Paul Curry. Had to do some pinch hitting in ruck as well. Kick the opening goal of the match. One goal, one is tally so far. The kick here is very poor though. 20 metres out straight in front, he misses. One behind there, one goal, two for him. Coburg 14 19 103. Port Melbourne 6 8 44. 14 and a half minutes, final term. I'd be a little bit disappointed with that. 
Bo Nixon brings the ball back into play and finds Dalton. Dalton kicks up the line and finds De Bruin, who's been fairly solid across the Port Melbourne half back line today. He kicked inboard and found Nana, who got the handball off to Waldron. He's copped it up straight away. Ryan Anderson, Walters inside 50, long bomb. In fact, it's downfield. It was clobbered after he got rid of it. Well, the mark was taken anyway by Lynch. Yeah. And Lynch will go back and have a set shot at goal from about 15 metres out. Very tough angle. Though. He's a left footer, of course, Nick Lynch. So it is the right pocket for him. It is a deep angle, though, as we've made mention. And, of course, the breeze comes in from that scoreboard gap as well. Tough kick for Nick Lynch. We'll wait and see what he can do on this occasion. He comes in this time. Deliberate kick. Stabs at it. Not a good one. Missed everything, in fact. And the relieving kick to be taken by Bo Nixon for Port Melbourne. A couple of those today from Nick Lynch. Two out in the full from him. Gee, we expected a bit more of him uh, this year Nick, with this game, Nick Lynch. But nonetheless, good performance from Coburg. Nixon now, long out of defence. Needs a player to run on here. It's Johnston. Lots of space. D'Souza is miles away. He's also got Plimmon and Nainer in support. Runs to the wing position now. Long to half forward. Two on one. Henshaw gave the nudge. Umpire didn't spot it. At the back there, getting away was Curry. Centre of the ground now. Hughes has to wait for the footy. Turns it over now. Could be away, Port Melbourne. To Monty. Long to full forward. In space. Mark should be taken. It is taken. Kelly providing the shepherd. And the mark taken just 20 metres out from goal there by Matthew Pearce. It's a good team play there by the Port forwards. Didn't collide. The shepherd was provided. I should say the screen, of course, if you shepherd, the free kick goes against you, but it's done nonetheless. Pierce makes no mistake of that one. Comes in, kicks the goal, and Port still fighting this one out to the finish. Their second goal of the final term. They're 7 8 50, still trailing Coburg. 14 19 103. We've gone 16 minutes in the final term of the True Energy VFL Reserves Grand Final. Yeah, you mentioned this screen applied by Dean Kelly. He could have very well contested for that ball, held back when he realised Pierce was in space. And I suppose a good team goal on that occasion by Port Melbourne. So the margin, 53 points here. Gone 17 minutes in this final term. The VFL Reserves Premiership Cup will be going to Coburg City Oval. They finished on top of the ladder and they've earned the rewards today. Ball back in the centre. No one could win it clearly. Head over the ball. There was Coburg player thrown into the ground viciously by two Port Melbourne opponents and we'll have yet another bounce. Carrick, interesting to notice here, Tristan. We don't see many of the rotations at the VFL level. Carrick replacing teammate Rayson there. Been a very solid contributor, uh, Glenn Carrick, this afternoon. I'd like your thoughts on him. Uh, he's been very good. Had his head over the ball on most occasions around the ruck contest. He's been very busy. Back in the action, uh, head over the ball for Port Melbourne there was Waldron. He couldn't get an effective disposal out. Farrelly got the ball to Foster. Foster kicks up ahead looking for Anderson in space. Should evade his opponent and does so in Allen. Can look to kick inboard. Tasman Klingen managed to find space and can go back. He could be too far out to score so he's going to have to kick to a lead. That he does and Cleve Hughes comes out from full forward. Good strong lead. Gave Dalton no chance. Another chance to kick his fifth goal of the afternoon. So one of only two players this afternoon with AFL experience, of course, Tristan, is Cleve Hughes. Bo Nixon, the other, for Port Melbourne. Impressive display. This will uh, allow him to go into the summer and the pre-season with some real confidence, you'd suggest. That's right. Been the dominant forward on the ground. He got those lucky two goals in the space of 20 seconds earlier. But comes in this time. Makes no mistake. So Cleve Hughes, five goals. A good performance up forward. I think it was helped, though, by the hard work of his midfielders, Chris. So, Coburg 15-19, 109. Lead Port Melbourne 7 8 50. Just about to tick into time on in this final term. Contender for best on ground this afternoon, Cleve Hughes. One of a number for Coburg. They've had plenty of contributors. His marking presence up forward. It's, uh, it's really straightened them up, Coburg, this afternoon. It's been notable how much it's been missing from Port Melbourne at times. Dean Kelly, undersized for a key forward, has had to do the job for them. Been beaten out of position and double teamed. Been a very hard job for him. Certainly a, a great contrast to both ends of the ground. Back in the centre now. No clear possession here. Umpire Brown says, my ball, and they'll bounce it. Just about to tick on the time on a final term. Coburg, 
12 goals to four since quarter time. It set up this grand final victory. Sewell there, full of the footy, wrapped up straight away. And have another bounce. So Coburg, very impressive for them. Perfect start to the day. What will the seniors be able to produce in the main game against Geelong? Time will tell. Punch there by Tchaikovsky, the only one to contest. Down it was to Curry. The centre half board now. Tchaikovsky once again, round four of the play. Klingman, Klingman, kick long. Mark taken there by D'Souza. He can run on and kick the goal, and he does. And, Ta and Jack D'Souza there, second goal of the afternoon for him. Two goals, one his tally. And Coburg have equaled the score they kicked against Port Melbourne in the second semi final. They kicked 16 19 that day. They've got the same again here today at MC Labor Park. 21 minute mark final term. It's Coburg 16 19, 115. Port Melbourne 7 8 50. Yeah, Chris, good goal again. We mentioned screening earlier at the Port Melbourne end. That time, Cleve Hughes just held back, allowed Jake to Souza to take the mark. He was in and kick. A very good goal, and boy, was he happy about it. Spreading it around as well, Tristan. Nine individual goal kickers for Coburg. It's Gillum been put into the ruck for Port Melbourne. He got a good tap that time to Waldron. Handballed out the back door and found Allen. Good kick that time by Allen. Kelly on a strong lead. Wheels around now. Kick the ball long inside 50. McGlynn will have to fly. Backing back courageously there for Coburg was little. Oh, strong goal. It was. Ball drifted across the back of the pack. I didn't see it. Dwyer it was there, Tristan. He was the only one to keep his eye on the footy and his eye on the play. Ran forward, ran hard in the straight line at the footy and got rewarded. Got a bit sidetracked there, Chris. Just watching the Coburg player pick himself off the ground. I thought Port Melbourne player that flew. I think it was Reese Thomas. Coburg player stayed down. The ball went across the back of the pack and Sam Dwyer kicked a good goal, as he said. Kicked an excellent goal. He ran from the back of play there. Ran through, evaded all challenges, hard, straight in the line at the footy. Everybody else seemed to just sort of stop dead, but Dwyer was the one who was equal to the task and kicked the goal. He's deserved it. The A. Todd medal for best and fairest in reserves competition in 2007, Sam Dwyer. Long kick into forward line now from the resumption. It's going to be Lynch over the top of the footy here for Coburg. He's wrapped up, no opportunity to get the ball clear. Going to have a bounce 55 from goal. Margin back to 59. It's just headed out that way as the game has progressed. Just five goals since quarter time for the Borough. Out the back here, this is Sewell. Who can he get? Kick is smothered here. In support is Farrell. He over the top of the foot. He couldn't gather cleanly. Allen now, hands off. Port trying to win in numbers. Two on two in the end though. Umpire Richie will say my ball will have a bounce. So Sam Dwyer, second goal for him of the afternoon it was. One of just two multiple goal kickers for Port Melbourne. At least they've fought it out hard in the final term. Ball up again there, out the tap in was Gillum. Quiet afternoon for the full forward, Andrew Gillum. Coburg get it forward, D'Souza went early. Can he recover against Naina? No, Naina tried to get it, scooped the ball out of the back of the hands. Deliberate, said the umpire. Probably a good decision there. Didn't disguise it particularly well, Rowan Naina. Free kick to Coburg on the arc of 50. What will they do here? This is Little, hands in boards, perhaps a bit too clever there for D'Souza. Needed the contest, so did Sewell. Sewell won it, back in boards. Which way will it go? Scooped underneath him there by Dwyer to Allen. Allen now, heads wide, could be away here the Borough, and they are so. This is Waldron, has a bounce. Will he go a second bounce? No, runs full measure on the second occasion and finds a teammate presenting up the ground. Looks like Peel there at centre half forward. Kicks long, over the head of a contesting forward. It's a poor kick. McGlynn had to back back. The free kick is paid for the push. It'll go the way of Caffle Cor. It wasn't a good kick on that occasion. I think he had Henshaw providing the lead. Just took far too long to kick it to him. Deep in defence now, Anderson. Goes down the line to Tchaikovsky. Called to play on, centre the ground. Having to wait for the ball here with Sewell. Strong punch there from Gillum. Arc of 50, which way not bounce? It'll go the way of the Tigers and Robertson, and Robertson will head wide to Carrick. Stayed up in the breeze there, the ball. Carrick over the top of it, head over the footy. He couldn't get it out there. Still taken away there by Port, a Port Melbourne opponent. Wrestling on, this should be a bounce umpire, Richie. Finally, he calls it. And the bounce will come. 24 and a half minutes gone. Coburg by 59. 
proud afternoon for Coburg already. Can they keep it going through to the seniors? It's been good for them. Racing coming off the bench there, tried to get to the tap in time, it couldn't do so. D'Souza chasing out now towards the boundary line. Kick off one step, under pressure, left foot kick, and Nixon takes the mark. Nat Nixon played on when he shouldn't have done. Mullins now, can he recover for Coburg? Spins around one, tried to do it all himself, caught holding the footy. Strong tackle by his original opponent of this afternoon in Gary Johnston, and Johnston can relieve for Port. A lot of players ahead. Might choose to switch Gary Johnson, switch he does. Called to play on now is Shane Allen. The kick went backwards, said the umpire. He's got Pierce out in space, the ball sits for him, it does. Pierce kicks up the line and finds De Bruin. True centre wing, out of side here at MC Labor Park. Launches a long left foot kick inside 50. Good lead, applied by Henshaw. He spilt the easy part of it, spilt the mark. Running out of defence there is Vasilevsky for Coburg. Got the handball to Anderson, back to Vasilevsky. Looked for Little, punched away by Pierce. Still have a chance to gather. It was Foster with his head over the ball. He couldn't gather cleanly. Chance now for Monteith for Port Melbourne. Ball eluded him. Miles Sewell looked to gather. Did very well. Tricky footy to gather, it seems, at present. Coming through for Coburg was racing. Got the handle onto Paul Curry. Paul Curry looked to switch play. Couldn't do so. Coming through strongly for Port Melbourne is Andrew Gillam. Got the handle over the Todd medalist we mentioned in Dwyer. That time Dwyer misses the target, his teammate there in Shane Allen, the ball's gone over for a boundary throw in between wing and half forward for the Coburg Tigers. Kicked over 25 minutes in this final term. Going to be Coburg Premiers in the VFL Reserves competition for 2007. Dwyer this time for Port Melbourne, kicked up the line looking for De Bruin. Backing back courageously for Coburg though was Morelli. In fact, it's been dealt with after he took the mark, so it's going to be a 50 metre penalty. Chance, chance to launch yet another attack for the Coburg side. We mentioned they kicked 16-19 in the semi-final victory against Port Melbourne. They currently stand on that score at present. So Morelli fancies himself to get the journey. He's going to have a pot shot at it. Comes in, I don't think it'll have the legs. Right to the hot spot, flying there was D'Souza. Down at the fall of the ball for Coburg was Lynch. He couldn't snap it around his body far enough and threw for one behind. So poor day in front of goals for Nick Lynch, but at least he made something on that occasion. And if it was just the behind. Coburg now by the even 60. Kelly down the line. The Bruins here, runs onto it, spins around, no one in support. Kicks to centre half forward now. Player has to wait under. Oh, Specky taken there. Over the top there. Strong mark taken by Farrelly over the top of Allen to Tchaikovsky now. In fact, it's Vasilevsky, two bouncer through the centre of the ground to full forward, out in the lead. Who's there in support? They need someone. Cattle core over the top to Lynch, to D'Souza. D'Souza for the easiest of goals. That's the icing on the cake. Five goals now in the final term for Coburg. 17-20, 122 Coburg. Port Melbourne, 8-8-56. D'Souza's third of the afternoon, and this has turned into a wonderful afternoon for Coburg Reserves. We mentioned the champagne was on ice. It's about to, the cork's about to be popped. They're about to party. The Coburg Reserve side played great football today. Very much deserved victory. They've been the, the dominant team in the VFL comp Reserves competition. It has to be said this year. And they'll be deserved winners of the 2007 Premiership. Back in the centre. Give that tap to Gillen, but only found Ryan Anderson coming through for Coburg. He kicks in 550. That time, Paul Curry caught behind. The umpire's going to pay the mark the way of Port Melbourne's Dalton. About 20 metres out from his defensive goal. Casual kick over the top. He managed to find his teammate there. Called to play on now. Kicks out wide looking for Pierce. Pierce attacked the ball, did well. Got the handball inboard to Bo Nixon. Takes a bounce now on centre wing. Handball's over the top where he found Plimmon. Haven't seen a lot of this man today. Takes two bounces, three bounces. Pot, you better get rid of it, son. Kicks inside 50. Not a good kick, there it is. Coburg celebrate. 2007 VFL Reserves Premiers. The Coburg Tigers, congratulations to the footy club.
17-20-122 to 8-8-56, the final scores here at MC Labor Park. And going through those goal kickers for the Coburg Tigers, Cleve Hughes led the way with five goals too. Three apiece to Mullins and to Souza, and singles to Curry, Claw, Little, Lynch, Anderson and Carrick. Off the Port Melbourne, we are doing the afternoon for them. Two goals apiece to Dwyer and Kelly, singles to Pierce, Carroll, Gillum and Thomas. So the Coburg Tigers are the VFL Reserves victors in 2007. Thanks to True Energy, VFL Premiership will have the award celebrations in just a couple of minutes. Be interesting to see who's awarded best on ground and the like. Disappointing afternoon there for Shane Hoy in the centre of the ground. He was injured during the opening term, didn't reappear with a knee injury. But nonetheless, you can look back with a premiership medallion, medallion as a consequence of this afternoon. For Port Melbourne, they finished second at the end of the home and away season. Half a game off top position. Top position, of course, being the Coburg Tigers. Coburg beat them by 45 points at Tiak Oval in the second semi-final. And they followed it up this afternoon with a stunning success, 66 points to the final margin. Coburg 17-20, Port Melbourne 8-8-56. We'll go through the players as they receive the medallions, but very good performance from Coburg, Tristan. And uh, the atmosphere building up here at MC Labor Park, a good crowd now starting to get into position for the VFL Seniors Grand Final for what's been the Coburg Football Club's biggest afternoon since 1989. Well, of course, they won the club, club championships this year, uh, finishing on top in the reserves, in the top four in seniors. And I tell you, the Coburg fans will be well and truly fired up for the big game against the Cats, which will get underway in, in about half an hour or so. We wait for the... Port Melbourne sitting there, ruining one that got away, but they were never really in the game, apart from that first term. They were just blown away. Their skill level was subpar today, it has to be said. And Coburg did really make them pay. Subpar. Lack of tall options, I think, also hindered Port Melbourne greatly today. They couldn't be direct in the manner which they'd probably like to be. Andrew Gillum and Reese Bloomfield, just two players we can spot out who had to do a lot of work at both ends of the ground. They basically stretched themselves a bit thin in the finish. And as a consequence, they had to go go wide, couldn't play direct corridor footy as Coburg were able to do and uh, when you do that, it doesn't matter what happens with the, uh, the on ballers winning the footy but Port Melbourne found out in too many areas and they lost this afternoon to a Coburg side whose use of the footy I thought was very good, didn't make the basic skill areas either, didn't see the fumbles, they stayed on their feet when they needed to, did the simple things well, laid strong tackles, locked players up and were conse consequently rewarded with first use of the footy and first use of the ball into the forward line. So Coburg players huddling around into position. Guys, just getting into readiness here. Travis Parnaby, the media man of AFL Victoria, I can see down there. One of the men in position for the presentations. Been a good year for Coburg. Uh, unlucky for Ramiz, for Ramiz Daga, he misses out this afternoon on both sides. Wasn't selected this afternoon. Won't be playing on the seniors. And Shane Hoy, of course, we mentioned, copped an injury in that opening term. But apart from that, a wonderful afternoon for Coburg's reserves. For coach Adam Potter in particular, he was coach of the Western Jets in the TAC Cup. And a couple of the players at his disposal have uh, come up with him to seniors level of football and they've been here in the reserve side this afternoon and been rewarded with a premiership medallion for Troy West and the Port Melbourne Football Club a good effort following their attempt to finish second after the home and away season we'll get some of the presentations here and it's Coburg's 18th VFL Reserve Grand Premiership. Please welcome Mr. Nicholas Saunder from the Sandringham Football Club to present the Fred Hill Memorial Medal, Premiership Medals and Premiership Cup. Nicholas is a five-time VFL Premiership player 
seventh by that Crosky Miller medalist, and is currently tenth on the all-time VFL goalkeeping list with nearly 700 goals. He's a three-time Victorian representative and has been selected in the VFL Team of the Year on seven occasions. The Brent Hill Memorial Medalist for 2007 is Stephen Foster of the Slovo Football Club. So giving first use of the ball out of the centre for Kovic this afternoon. Old fashioned tap ruckman Stephen Foster. And he's been rewarded with the Fred Hill medal. I really liked his game, Chris. Thought he was fantastic all day. Shouldered the majority of the, the ruck load today. A lot of running and uh, yeah. he did very, very I well. I thought he benefited yeah, though from being up against two smaller, smaller ruckmen. And uh, as a consequence, he was able to have it all his own way at times, particularly during the second and Number third three, terms. Paul Curry. So Paul Curry, the first to receive his medal, kicked the opening goal of the game. Number five, Cathal Core. one of the players who's been in and out of the, the senior side this season for Coburg. Seven, Jonathan Mullins. Jonathan Mullins, the Northern Territorian, very good this afternoon. Goal snake, very dangerous early. Only kicked Number three today, but it was Damien very good. Rayson. Now, Damien Rayson was one who particularly came into the game during that second term run for Coburg. Number 15, Matthew Morelli. Quiet afternoon for Matthew Morelli. Nonetheless, contributor particularly towards the dying stages of the match. Number 16, James Keogh. Did a job up forward, uh, up back, I should, down back, I should say, James Keogh this afternoon. Andrew Gillum had a tough time against him. Sean Hoy. Sean Hoy, unlucky for him. Injured during the opening term with that left knee problem. Didn't reappear after quarter time. We can see him trying to make his way up the steps here, but well rewarded for his efforts during the season. Negotiated that very well in Sean Hoy, I think. Jake D'Souza. Jake D'Souza up forward. Three Did goals well. today for Jake. Yeah, good solid performance from Jake Number D'Souza, two, one, of the, one of the many Western Jets players who came through with Adam Potter to this level. Michael Farrelly, Farrelly probably the highlight of the day, that screamer he Number took. 34, did very well too. And another has been uh, privileged to play seniors and reserves footy for this, this uh, club this year. Number 45, Wade Hughes, five Chris goals today. Wonderful performance from him. I thought a little bit stiff perhaps not to get the medal himself as Taz Klingen comes up to collect his medal. Number 48, the Fred Hill medalist, Stephen Foster. So Stephen Foster, 200 centimetre ruckman, originally from, Rich, from, uh, from Mitcham in the Eastern Football League. Number 50, Miles Sewell. Miles Sewell played last week for the, uh, the Coburg Tigers seniors. Number 55, Nicholas Little. Nick Little, gee, must be close to leading position on the ground this afternoon, Tristan. He was very good. Probably faded away a little bit in that final Number term, but he was six, instrumental Nicholas in setting Lynch. up their win in the second and third term, I thought. Mick Lynch ended the year with 35 goals in the reserves competition. Just won this afternoon, a couple of Number bad misses, but a good Christian year for him nonetheless. McElane. Christian McElane, good young player. Didn't see a lot of him this afternoon. One of the, uh, the Call the Cannons players has come through. Josh Riddle. Josh Riddle did a job down back. Very uh, consistent this afternoon. Not so many errors from him. Number 61, Robert Tchaikovsky. Robert Tchaikovsky, very solid body player. We've mentioned him throughout the, uh, the coverage of this match. Had to pinch hit in Number racket times as well. Matthew Vasilevsky. Gave them run off the full back line, Matthew Vasilevsky, along with Ryan Anderson. One of the better players this afternoon. 63, Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson, good run off half back. Rebounded well and kicked well into the forward ball, line. Glenn Carrick. And Glenn Carrick, a very impressive afternoon for him. The boy from Gisborne, 22 years old. And he's been now rewarded with a VFL Premiership medallion. Sam Robertson. Sam Robertson collecting the Premiership medal here, the left footer. Did well across the centre line, the got clear of the play. Adam so Adam Potter, formerly of the Western Jets, originally from Taylor's La from Taylor Taylor Lakes Lakes in the uh, the Western Potter, Region Football League. Of the Football Club, and Coach Adam Potter to accept the 2007 True Energy VFL Reserve Grade Premiership Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Here's the Premier. Yeah! 18th Premiership in the VFL Reserves competition for the Coburg Tigers to add to their six at seniors level. Good beginning to what could be a good day for the Coburg Tigers VFL side. Just about finished our coverage here at the VFL Reserves Grand Final for 2007, proudly sponsored by True Energy. On behalf of myself, Chris Weaver, with Tristan Fernanda, my co-commentator, thank you for enjoying this broadcast from MC Labor Park. Congratulations to Coburg Tigers, the, M the VFL Reserves Premiers for season at 2007.